Hello, hello. Welcome to another stream. Uh, I am going to stream a little bit of Godot, Ludum Dare Jam, Space Station game. Uh, let me just get ready. I can't. For some reason, the um, Twitter doesn't work on my PC. It does work on my phone, strangely. So I can't, I don't know what's going on. The problem is I can't post about the stream, can't announce it. Uh, hello, yeah, I also, I, I'm also going to make some coffee. But yeah, I really want to uh, also notify people of it, of the, of the stream. Today I'm going to do a little bit of uh, converting to a new asset workflow, by the way. Okay, I'm just still waiting for Twitter to, or well, let's call, I guess X is called now. Um, Okay, this is, is this the third or the fourth stream? I have no idea. Um, well, I think it's the fourth, I'm not sure. So on the third one, I made a make cupola module. Uh, and had some adapters and I had a um, docking sphere. Okay, and this is the fourth, maybe it is the fifth, I'm not actually sure. Let's see, still nothing. I have no idea what's going on. Let me restart. So the connection is okay. It's not the connection, it's something else. Oh! Okay. Do I need to clear the cache? I don't understand. Something is something is very wrong with Twitter and PC. Let's see. Um Okay, so I definitely can use it on the phone, which is strange. Uh, so, can I copy? Well. Do they reach the rate limit? <laughs> Does it still exist?
yeah your media failed to upload okay well i'm gonna have to resort to copying to okay i'm gonna put my text on mail compose um okay and then i'm gonna send the pictures mm. Let's see, uh, this one, and then this one, there's three of them, and this one. Okay, that's it. I close it, I open, I open Gmail on the phone. drafts there it is okay view image save view image save view image save ridiculous but that's what I need to resort to and copy the text okay there it is okay let's make a new tweet oh no it's completely fucked up the formatting classic What the hell? Okay, add pictures. Post. And it's not working on the phone either. What the hell is going on? Why did Twitter fail now? Just when I need to announce. <laughs> I need to announce my uh, my stream. Damn. Okay. Uh, let me just do this. Um, Yeah, still not. Weird thing is I can receive notifications. I'm getting notifications, but... And I can load stuff, but I can't send anything. Oh, there it is. The notific... The... Twitter started working. Okay, well, then I guess I need to delete this message. <laughs> can I cancel? 
sending a post I don't think so I'm not sure oh there uh, did I did I actually post it I have no idea oh I have okay good uh, okay good oh shit Uh, mosquito just stung me. Okay. Well, uh, hello, Igor Live. Nice to see you. Okay, so let me let me start. I'm gonna open Goto. Actually, I'm gonna go ha make some coffee first. But yeah, let me let me start. Hello. So, welcome to the fourth stream, I think so. On the last stream, I made a little cupola module. So yeah, I'm making like a space station, space station game. Uh, and, um, and I made, yeah, there's no cupola here, but it's in the, f in the file. This should be removed. Uh, tube GLB. Uh, oh wait, it's not there. Oh, I, because I reverted. Yes, I actually reverted. So nothing is here, but it is in Blender. Hopefully, I hope I didn't revert Blender. Uh, I hope so because it's all in the same repository. Whew! Good, I didn't. So yes, on the past stream, it was a very short one yesterday. I made these two things. Uh, the, this is just for testing. I made the ball with uh, six different exits so that this is like a node between six different modules. And then I also made a cupola. Uh, but the cupola actually needs to have the bottom as well, which is missing right now. Uh, and I realized that I, I had a huge problem yesterday that I, di I didn't understand how to actually use assets. So I asked her uh, a little detour from Zig stuff. Yes, because it is uh, Ludum Dare. It was Ludum Dare this weekend. And I thought, ah, and uh, the theme was limited space. So I thought, why not make, um, why not make a little cramped space station game? Uh, and I thought, why not use, uh, why not use Godot? By the way, I just noticed that my mail is first thing when, when I tab. So yeah, I have a lot of, uh, here it is. Um, yeah, I have a lot of uh, examples of like clutter here. Here is one, you've seen it on the cover. Uh, yeah, I, I really want something that looks like this inside. Like you, you can move around in zero G and it's super cluttered, you know, you can't, you're getting into wires and, <laughs> and, and stuff inside, look at that. Yeah, so that is sort of the idea and I want to base it on like Russian space stations. Here is Mir and because it is like it is super cramped and also kind of modular and I can assemble a space station myself. And it's also, yeah, I really love this analog switches as well. Yeah, here, here is the sphere module that provides access to six different uh things uh okay so yeah by the way i also forgot to turn on my chat twitch chat on the phone there it is so yeah Okay, no messages. Why is it keeps connecting? I don't know, I don't understand. So anyway, today on stream, I want to redo, um, uh, yeah, re-import assets in a better way. Because I realize now how, how assets actually work in, um, in Godot, if you want to export everything as a single, model. I'm going to get into detail with that later. 
Uh, and then after reimporting assets in a better way, I'm going to make everything turn all parts into scenes. Well, that's how Godot calls prefabs. So, yeah, and then assemble a little station. Assemble a little station. What I want to try to do today as well is I want to implement a little movement. Uh, movement with clicking. <laughs> so instead of having the magical, uh, magical fly around like I do, if you, if I open the project. Oh yeah, one more thing I have to mention. Integrate, integrate uh, Goto Utils. Like this, I'm gonna. Uh, and yeah, there's also a thing before stream. Made, got a, got a utils. On, stream. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for doing this on. <laughs> Usually I do this before the stream, but I just started now. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. You can fly around now with just keys, and the keys are basically adding force to your rigid body where the camera is, right? So this is how the game works right now. Um, uh, but I actually don't want to make it like magically floating around. Instead, I want to move the player by actually like grappling onto the, onto the station and then moving this way. Like you're basically using your hands to move around and then bounce yourself around. And also bounce by like jumping into the wall, like out, out uh, well, not into the wall, but away from the wall. So if you, if you f focus like this, you can like jump and then you jump to the other side, you know? So that could be the way you, you travel through the station. So yeah, th so that you can't just magically fly around. Uh, what's the name of that to do extension? Uh, it's called to do plus. Uh, I absolutely recommend it. It's great. It's great. There it is. And what you can do in it, almost every, <laughs> almost every stream somebody asks me about it. Uh, the cool thing is you can say alt enter turns a thing into a to do. Alt D uh, makes it done. Alt C cancels it. There's even like alt S for started. Uh, so yeah, you can keep track of it. Uh, lasted 80 Wow I didn't even know this okay if you started it if you made it done you get the lasted as well that's pretty cool yeah and then you can also control shift a to archive everything that you've done so it will uh, basically just copy all the done things below but in my case I don't want to do that because it's a it's a stream uh, it's just enumerating the streams uh, thanks, no problem. Yeah, let me go get some coffee and then I will come back and start the stream properly. Meanwhile, you can look at... You can look at the astronaut flying away. Okay, just put on the coffee, uh, the water for now. How far did I fly away? Not far enough. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Uh, first off, I want to say that I started making a little utility uh, repo. Yeah, that is Goto Utils. Uh, if I go to my GitHub, oh my god, this, this ad's annoying. Uh, nobody liked it yet. Oh, okay, go and like it. Uh, so yeah, I actually added a new repo, Goto Utils, and <laughs> because, yeah, you know, I come from Unity, so I want to make it 
you know, more Unity like, more something that I got used to. And uh, yeah, there it is. I just started it like three hours ago. And in it, I only have this for now. I only have like <laughs> forward, up, right. Uh, those are the functions. Uh, oh, you're using C-sharp with good old. Yes, I'm using C-sharp. Um, uh, yeah, because, you know, I'm used to it. It has much better IntelliSense. Yeah, but the problem is that there's not too much resources online. That's the problem because it's a pretty new thing. That's the only... Yeah, I was trying to, like, use... Uh, uh, last time I was trying to make a little look around, free look thing, and it was just like it was made in Godot, uh, GD script, and I was like, oh, oh no, I have to rewrite it. So I rewrote it to C sharp. <laughs> it was short. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so right now, uh, I say I made a, this Godot utils. So yeah, but so basically in my code, what I can do now is I can just say, uh, you know, this forward, and then it takes the forward vector. It's because this thing calls like uh, no 3 d global transform basis dot Z. It's a weird, uh, you know, it's, it's basically accessing the matrix and then taking the basis, but, you know, much simpler to just have it forward, right up, right? Uh, because I'm used to those. Uh, okay, and right now, I'm actually using these functions here, but I want to include my... Wait, let me all just check if I... Uh -huh, I only changed to do. That makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to use this one. So, uh, let's grab that. Oh, yes. I am going to purchase fork at some point, uh, but uh, for now I'm using the free version. Uh, this is like, this is like uh, WinZip. <laughs> so anyway, and this is, you know, this is a free use because this game is going to be free. Um, anyway, what did I want to say? I wanted to open the camera controller and I wanted to add uh yeah let me add a script i wonder if oh yeah by the way let's let's rearrange things uh, uh let me add script folder and i'm gonna move camera controller in there uh wait i didn't make a folder <laughs> i made a file okay scripts a folder script already exists. Does it? It's a file. Yes, move to recycle bin. What? Where is scripts? Doesn't exist. Hmm. Maybe it was just confused with the file. Okay, let me move that here. Uh, do you want to move? Okay, let's see what happens if I move in Godot. Is it smart enough, like in Unity, to understand that this thing has moved? Or does it just break? Because it does reference by CS, I think. Let's see. Yeah, it does work. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> um, okay, and I'm going to add my utils in here as well so let's see uh cs whoops uh whoops gonna be utils okay let's open that i'm gonna copy it there we go okay so now in the camera controller this is uh this has been moved I'm going to remove this. Instead, I'm going to using not k. And now it should work out of the box. Yes. Cool. Okay, so the first thing <laughs> on schedule is done. Um, integrate Godot utils. There it is. And I also showed that I made Godot utils. Okay, let's now 
move all the assets around. This is going to completely destroy the whole project, I'm pretty sure. But that's good because this is early in making the project. Uh, this is going to be moved scripts and added utils. Why do we have minus I Y for up? Yeah, <laughs> I think I made a mistake there. Uh, the thing is, I didn't even test it. I think maybe because I just copied. <laughs> I, I think I just copied this one and I renamed it and I didn't see it. Let me test it. Let's quickly do it. Uh, let me use another key. Like maybe something like input up. Okay. Uh, I don't know. C and X. Maybe. Okay. And then I'm going to use plus up by input up. Let's try that. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> okay, C, X, yes. Wait, did I change it actually or not? Uh, I did change it, yes. So this is correct, yes. C is up and X is, okay. All right, so let's do the inevitable. But first I need to grab my coffee. Uh, so yeah, utils, oops, utils y, oops, okay, uh, and I'm going to edit this, I'm going to just edit it here directly, because why not, okay, <laughs> um, Fix wrong inverted y. Okay, commit to the main branch. Yes. Okay. Uh, good. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully nobody used my utils. I don't think anybody used it. And there are no stars yet. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me grab my coffee and then I'm gonna start with a big move. Okay, I'm back with the coffee. Uh, let's see. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I need to show you something. 
I had a little discussion on Twitter about about how do you actually handle assets. So here we go. Uh, I asked on Twitter, what's the preferred 3D model workflow? Because I'm confused. I have a bunch of pieces, right? My modules, they want to turn into prefabs like individually. Uh, and in, in Godot, those are scenes. Assemble them in the editor, right? Uh, and, but yeah, there's a problem. <laughs> Uh, in Godot, the only way to keep a reference to the original mesh is to inherit the GLB into a new scene. Uh, and so each piece of inherited... Yeah, so, so one way that I used so far is that I take a GLB, right? And then I simply create a new inherited scene like this. And then I disable what I don't need <laughs> because you can't delete, right? You can't delete because it, it's inherited. Then I remove everything that I don't need for what I need. Like if I want just this tube, I, uh, I remove everything else, right? Like this, which is ridiculous because it doesn't work like this for colliders. Like I'm going to have colliders for all of these things still existing. And that's the problem that I had yesterday where my sphere was doing. So this is definitely not the right workflow. Another problem is that when I add this into the same GLB, this is going to actually like add new items for all of my scenes. So that's a problem. Uh, thing is that if I simply copy, if I take this GLB into the scene, well, not, not here, I'm going to put it in main. If I just put it here, right, and I, and I copy it, no. And I actually do, um, uh, if I try to save it as a scene, you cannot do that because this is an instantiated scene. You have to create an inherited scene instead. Uh, but here is the problem. If I make local, then I cannot, uh, then the, this mesh has lost all the references to the original. So this becomes now local as well. The data of this mesh has become local. And as you can see here, uh, we have this, uh, you see this appended thing, W4GP3. This is because it has created a copy of it. And I didn't understand this in the beginning, uh, but this is how it works. So how do you, <laughs> how do you make it actually work? Oh, another thing, Another method that you can handle assets that I thought of is instead of doing this, you simply export every part as a separate GLB, right? I'm gonna separate, I'm gonna export this, I'm gonna export this. That makes sense, but it will actually make a copy of the textures for each of them. So it's going to have tube, metal corrugated, it's gonna have cupola, metal corrugated, it's gonna have, for each of those, it's gonna make new textures, which is, ridiculous as well. So I asked on Twitter, what's the best thing? And somebody suggested me to actually do uh, convert them to resources. Uh, where is that? Um, you convert, uh, where is the answer I actually had? Um, you can export meshes Store in single GLB into separate resources. All of them will be updated automatically on report. So yes, I didn't know that you can actually separate things into resources. And a resource is a weird word, I think, because it feels like separating into resources means you're making a copy, but it's actually a reference to the original model. Uh, and I say, yeah, I say here, when I break up the model, it loses the link to the file. Um, but it says, he says, uh, when opening, uh, oh yeah, and how do we do this? And it says like, oh, well, there's a drop, uh, drop down set mesh external path. So you open the GLB and then for each of the meshes, there it is, save to file. I mean, who is ever going to notice this, right? You save to file and then it will export it as a resource into like, you know, you say meshes and then you export it here and I say tube and now it becomes, 
it becomes a resource. And now when I open it, there is a resource. You can put it in the scene file, but actually it's nothing more than just a mesh. So it doesn't have any colliders. It doesn't have any nodes. It's not a prefab. Uh, you still have to make a prefab out of it. But the good thing is that if you copy it, it will still keep the reference to the original. Uh, it is such a, I don't know, it's such a weird thing. <laughs> there it is. You can see that the path is actually Mesh's tube. Uh, it is a really, really strange uh, workflow, right? And then I had a question like, wait a minute, how do I actually, do I have to export them manually for each of the meshes? Da, 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 right? Well, no, there's actually a super to completely unnoticeable button here, Actions. And you can say set mesh save paths. So yeah, you can actually export them into the folder <laughs> automatically. But another thing is that Blender names these uh, meshes in a weird way. It doesn't actually give them this name. So I will have to rename those in, in Blender as well. Uh, yeah, it is a weird system, but that's how you do it. Uh, you got to start adding people in Discord for your streaming. I miss everyone. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't want to add everyone. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, Slothy. Um, uh, well, I maybe I, I should make like m more roles. <laughs> yeah, I should maybe make a stream role. That's uh, that would be a good idea to then have like yeah, to, to then uh, notify everybody who wants to be notified about streaming. Yeah, I didn't think about it. Uh, let me add that for, for a to-do. After, after stream. After stream to-do. Uh, where's my to-do? To-do, 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 to-do. Okay. After stream, create streamer no what do what do i call it streamer it's not a streamer streamer stream me stream me uh, that's a weird name uh, tag in discord okay yeah something like that so that you can apply for it and get a tag if you want to be notified about streams. Okay, so anyway, uh, yeah, let's actually rename all the meshes. So the thing is that Blender does this random thing where it's like naming meshes, right? This is the actual name of the mesh, by the way. Uh, you can see that the object is called Cupola, but the mesh name is different, right? And the thing is that you can also rename that, but nobody does that because why would you, right? The object is usually enough. But not with, uh, not with um, uh, Goto. So I'm going to have to rename all of them to have any, uh, you know, meaningful, meaningful mesh name. Uh, this is going to be tube, tube transition. Tube. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Let's let's do that. Uh, you know what? Maybe I should rename everything to Hull, Hull tube. Hull trans, Hull uh, tube small, and then we have um, Hull. Yeah, this is the how do I call this wedge? <laughs> yeah, this is like adapter, adapter for the small one, and then we have a docking docking port no this is like a uh, docking port ring let's call it like that so i think that this mesh is actually part of yeah this is the same mesh exactly because i've duplicated and these are actually duplicated which i shouldn't have this was just for a test uh, okay i have the cupola i have the head what is the difference between the head This is just shorter. 
Let's do tube trans short. Yeah, or maybe I should just cr uh, turn this one into that. Let's do a mirror, uh, vertical mirror. Okay, and I'm gonna apply it, apply the scale, put it on the bottom, and now we don't need this. And I can take this one, turn it into a short, shorter version. So this is 1.5, let's make it 0 0.75, eh? yeah, like a short, short piece. And then I could have, I think stream announcements is the most clear name. Yeah, <laughs> something like that, stream announcements. I don't know, I guess you need to have some kind of a space, but I'll do that after, after stream. I'll think about the name, but yeah, maybe better than streamy. Uh, okay, so the cupola is there, there is that. It fits per perfectly. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, and yeah, this one is actually, yeah, let's rename everything to hull. Hull, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Adapter, let's call them adapters. Mm. Uh, yeah, small trance. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Let's do the, the, let's do this, this trance. Okay, uh, hull hull sphere. That's going to be that hull sphere. This is going to be the tube sphere. No, sorry, hull tube. Then we have the Hull trans hull hull tube small it would be great to have like some kind of a renaming utility for meshes as well uh, and tube yeah this is with a porthole with a window uh, hull tube Hole. And it's very important to not change these names because, yeah, Goto is gonna go crazy if I do. Uh, and this one is trans short. And that also goes with a mesh short. Okay, let's make sure that everything is good. Uh, I have the cupola with the cupola, docking ports. Docking ports have the rings, hull wedge. Hull sphere, hull trans, hull tube, hull tube porthole, hull tube small. Uh, this is hull trans short. There it is. Okay, so hopefully that's it. Let's also make sure that everything is scaled to one and that everything is zero. Yeah, good. Let me just move this a little bit down. Let's put it to three. Okay, that's good. And what about pivots? Yes, this one has pivot in the middle, this one pivot in the middle, this one pivot to the top. Okay. And the thing is that this is actually like pointing down. Should all of them point down? Maybe. Maybe I should make them all point down. So I'm gonna make, turn this around as well. Um, I don't know, does it make more sense to make, uh, no, let's do the opposite. Let's make everything point up. So this one is up, this one is, this one is down. There it is, up. This one should be down. 
this one should be down and it's not actually correct. Should move it to this point. There we go. Okay, so we have them on the correct orientations. Oh, the, I just moved this one. Okay, can I actually make it not movable in Blender? Preferences, preferences, keys, uh, select and tweak. No, only select. Yes. Oh, it is also tweaking, but it's not going to like accidentally move on selection. Yeah, that's just annoying. Yeah, it still is tweaking. Can I actually make it not do that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Because that I thought that's that's what select and tweak meant. But apparently it doesn't. Tool keys, active selection tool, right mouse select action. Uh, I wish it didn't do moving. But anyway, uh, let's go with this one. Uh, I'm going to export everything. Select objects. Export to limb space goto and meshes. Let's let's call let's make a new folder and I'm going to call it Mm. art let's do that and then this is how I usually do it in uh, and then I'm gonna put all my imports in here so this is gonna be tube okay let's see save this Let's see what happens. Importing assets. Art tube. Okay, there it is. Cool. So it has re imported everything, which is good because I'm going to delete everything. Okay, let me actually kill everything that I have. Uh, and I'm going to remove this test cube as well. Okay, that's good. So I don't have anything else. Now let's add a child node, which is just going to be a node. It's going to do nothing just for uh, just for uh, organization. This is going to be called station. And I'm going to add my station in here. Um, so let's see. Art. Yeah, I should have actually added it to a different folder. Uh, meshes. Yeah, let's keep it this way. Let's keep it this way so that art is all just jumbled up here. Uh, okay, so here's what we're going to do now. Uh, we have things. Oh, yeah, right. I also wanted to use the special keys because this is not using. Okay, I also want to ch test, test something. I want to test that there is a new, there are some tags that you can add like collision for colliders here i found that out when i was reading through the docs uh, so in blender you can put in these tags that is going to convert into colliders that's actually very similar to what i'm doing in my engine with uh, in shakedown <laughs> if you add a tag to an object it's going to convert it into a collider so let's let's try this uh, okay, let me just try with this export tube uh, and let's see if this works. Um, okay, so did it make cupola? There it is. It did turn it into a physics object. That's that's cool. Physics uh, static body. Okay, it has created a static body, but it does have physics off for some reason I don't know why is it going to is it gonna crash now no okay it didn't crash 
but yeah let's actually see if this if it does have oh yeah it does have a static body you can see here you can see in the debug okay cool uh, and yeah what's actually the name does name include call it doesn't good that's nice yeah because then I don't need to have a call on everything small call sphere call let me just copy it like this mm, call short call half tube half tube call porthole call tube small call and docking ring call only one what is this one this is number six it's the same thing should I put a call on all of them I don't I don't think so okay so yeah everything has calls let's me re-export uh, GLTF okay we're importing everything tube there it is everything has colliders now uh, okay cool so we have now colliders and let's turn them into a yeah let's export all the meshes uh, let's see let's me remove this resource remove and I'm gonna remove my old tube tube glb uh, tscn i'm gonna remove all the textures i'm gonna remove the tube glb test test i don't know what's the test appears to be invalid perfect uh svg svg that's the icon for my game, I guess. Uh, desk cube, I don't need that, but I'm gonna keep it. That's it, okay, let me export everything into meshes. Uh, so I'm gonna say extract, save mesh paths. Uh, I'm gonna go up, meshes, select current folder. There it is, perfect. They all are nice. We'll save to a new file. Save, that's it right reimport whatever uh, there we go we have all the meshes now working cool okay let's save that and now what I can do is I can take the tube and if I make this into a local make local that's going to turn it into individual yes perfect this is perfect okay and it ha still has the most important thing to check if it still has the reference to the resource there it is meshes tube cupola perfect okay so this means that I can change models and it will keep it uh, okay cool so now I can check I can turn these into uh, scenes right I can say how can I do a create scene? Okay, let's do tube sub resources instantiate child scene. No, I want to turn it into a scene. Save branches scene. There it is. Okay, and now I'm gonna let's add a new folder, call it prefabs. Uh, I don't know. No, let's call them scenes. No, let's call them prefabs because these are not scenes. But, you know, I'm going to be killed by all the Goto fanatics for calling it prefabs. But to me, it is prefabs. So I'll go with it. Uh, Hull tube. Yes, turn it into a scene. Nice. It has turned. It has turned. Nice. So now when I copy this, it will be a prefab. Okay, good. Um, okay, and let's turn everything else into it. So hold to your porthole, uh, save branches scene. There it is, already with a good name. Save branches scene, save, hold trans, 
Save branches scene. Uh, that's it. Cupola. Save branches scene. Hull sphere. Save branches scene. Docking ring. Save branches scene. That's it. I don't need to do other docking rings. Uh, and that's about it, right? Anything else? Aha, I have hull small, save branches scene, hull trans short, save branches scene. That's it. I don't need to do any other dockings. Okay, so I'm going to remove this tube and instead I'm going to use these prefabs, right? So if I put a hull tube, right? That is my beautiful prefab. I'm going to I'm going to put it to 0. Uh, I'm going to put it to zero. Where is transform? I really find it awkward that transform is not open by default. Uh, so it is hard to manipulate it. Okay, I'm going to start with this. Uh, and let's do that. Okay, now, uh, can I actually... Okay, if I add... No, I can't do that. I think I can actually instantiate things with a like porthole instantiate. There it is. Uh, yes, so I still need. Okay, there it is. Good. Okay. I think it has kept. Does, does it keep the position? It did. Okay. So actually, I don't want to have the position. Why is it not at zero? right it should be at zero and everything should be zeroed out so when I save this did it move it didn't actually move because it's a core thing okay I see now okay I understand I understand how it works now sphere uh, cupola yeah uh, but I do have to put it at zero is there some way to actually snap objects to floor? No. Transform dialog. Uh, is there a way to actually very s much more easily zero out this? This is annoying. No, this is scale. Uh, I want to transform dialog. Is there a way to like, oh, it has blocked everything. Nice. Okay, I think that this transform dialog is not for what I want. Uh, okay, what if I just snap it to zero like this? Does that work? It did. Okay, save. Okay, this also needs to be... Is there a way to like zero out? Uh, oh, there is. Actually, you can just... Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. So I can just click on this and I can say, do this. Nice. Okay, that's not bad. That's better. Okay, so the hull sphere actually will need docking rings. So I'm going to add a docking ring inside here. Uh, and first let me zero out. Zero out. Docking ring. There was a message. Why does the transform dialog block everything? I don't know. I, I ask, uh, <laughs> and and I love how you can resize. Oh my god! <laughs> it for a split second it actually rescales the texture. <laughs> Do you notice this? That's great. That's amazing. And then everything else is blocked. You can. I thought that the Godot was gonna crash, but yeah, it didn't. Okay, so let's... Yeah, why is transform not all, always open by default? Like, that's the thing that I use the most. I have to always knit, like, find this. It's so big. Everything has such a big, like... Why is it not in line? Why does it need a new... Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's weird. Okay. So, what is it going to be? Minus... Oh, yeah. Minus seven, eight. Minus seven, eight. That's good. Okay, and then 
well, how it should face outside, right? Why doesn't it show me the local? I want I want a local orientation. Please. Can I see a local orientation? Uh, instead, what is this? Sunlight. What is this? Use snap. Use local space. There it is. Okay. So yeah, let's make the up be the main thing. Uh, oh, now I have to copy everything around, but I'm going to change the transform and it has collapsed again. Okay, this is going to be the north with uh, 180 orientation. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't care about it. Okay, I'm going to make uh, another one. That's going to be a now at the side. Zero eight. Zero. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to have another one, which is in the minus. Oh, yeah, I can actually do this, right? I can actually copy the two. And then do the do this. Oh, it doesn't work because it's a local. Now let's not do local down. Uh, this is local, right? Yeah, there it is. Perfect. Except that I need to flip the flip these around. Okay, there we go. Okay. And then I want this one to point outside. It's a strange rotate tool. That's it. That's good. Okay, cool. Uh, let's save that. Docking ring and why doesn't it have a collider? Ah, because it is a sub scene. Yeah, that's why. Uh, it's kind of weird that it doesn't show you the sub scenes. It would be cool if it did. Okay, anyway. Let's see. This uh, this I changed. This I reverted. Hull sphere. I worked on that. Uh, Hull trans. Let's remove the transforms. Uh, trans short. Let's remove the transforms. Call tube. Let's remove the transforms. Porthole. So much, so much tasks. Uh, I wonder if this can be automated. Probably can be. Okay, already removed transforms and remove transforms here. Okay, so anyway, um, let's see. Let's remove everything. Here we go. Okay, so the art style with the textures remind me of Iron Lung a bit, yeah, but with uh, less PS1 with better lighting. Are you? Is this? Is this actually a Planet of Blood? <laughs> Maybe it is. Um, okay, anyway, uh, let's see. Okay, let's add new things. Let's, let's put a cupola. No, I'm going to put a sphere, instantiate. Okay, and I'm going to put it somewhere at the end. But first, I'm going to put a trans transition. There it is. And I'm going to put it... Yeah, let's put it on this side. Okay. And then I'm going to do a... Let's put a short one on the other side, just for some variety. Okay. And then I'm going to put a docking thing. Small transition, that's the one. 
This is almost like Kerbal Space Program. Uh, oh, and this one is now not aligned. Great. Uh, okay, can I actually move by... How do you do snap... Oh, couldn't find a solid floor. Uh, configure snap. Snap. Can I do a 0, 0.25, please? There it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is this looks weird. Uh, but that is how we do a transition between the two blocks. So this is going to go up. This is going to... What? Oh, did I accidentally put it here? Inside. Oh, I accidentally put everything. I parented everything. Oh no, I didn't know it works like this. Okay, because it was selected, I guess. Hold tube, I'm gonna put it outside. Hey, yeah, let's put it everything into station. Trans, uh, trans, short, tube. And now I'm gonna put the sphere over there ah well it's what's actually the size of this is it not oh it's not perfect okay i'm gonna put it to 0 0.75 okay and let's now try <laughs> let's now test if exporting re-exporting works uh because this is the major test for this workflow select objects tube Reimporting. There it is. It has shortened. Perfect. Oh, I have reference to the original object. That's that's great. Okay, but this is not aligned because ah, because the sphere has a weird dimension. That's the problem. Maybe it should be a little bit bigger. I think it should be. Okay. Anyway, now I can make um, short tube. Uh, yeah. One more thing. I can make it cupola. I'm going to instantiate. So whatever is selected, that's what you instantiate, I guess. Okay, let me do a cupola and I'm going to put on below the cupola, I'm going to have a small transition. Aha, uh, uh -huh, it is parented to it. And I'm going to rotate it like this. Cool. And then we can w put it on the, like this. Okay, it's not going to match exactly because of the sphere. Okay, not bad. And I want to add the hull, the small hull here. Uh, why is it called two? Oh, because there's two of them. Uh, hull tube small, let's instantiate that. And I'm going to put it over here. Ah, it's a wrong rotation. Uh, turn on grid snap. Blood is blue now. <laughs> yeah, it's a blue blood. What is going on here? Uh, why is it not uh, perfectly aligned? This is actually shorter than the outer, but it does actually kind of looks cool. It look cool with the wrong, with the wrong dimension. Uh, there definitely is something wrong. Wait, who is wrong? Why, why the hell is position not on the zero? Okay, I don't know how this happened. Oh, I must have accidentally moved something. Oh, god damn it. God damn it. That's it's very unclear at what you actually moved. Okay. I guess because I was reparenting everything. Okay, so this is at zero. And then I'm going to put this transition at the end. Uh yeah, and I'm going to put it upside down. Uh, 
Why is rotation weird? Okay. And there it is, except that, yeah, the position is also wrong again. And rotation is weird. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do it again. 90. Okay, there it is. Cool. Okay, so we have one module. Uh, let's try that. Doesn't have anything inside. Uh, let's see how that looks like. Uh, if you have keypad, you can use it the same way as in Blender for side top view and five foot orthogonal. Ah, I see. Okay, so there we go. No, I actually knocked one of the boxes. Not bad. Okay, let's go inside. There is a gap somewhere. I can see the gap. Uh, there it is. It's annoying. Okay, the good news is that it's black inside. And we have a little bit of light seeping in through the opening. There's our porthole. It doesn't have a window yet. Here's the, the nodes. And then we go up into the cupola. Nice. And we can look out. Can we see the station? We can uh, barely. There's the station. You can barely see the station from the cupola. It would be nice. I, I actually want to make it a little taller so you can see the you can see more of the inside. Of course, it doesn't have glass now, so you can just float through. That's nice. Nice. Uh, the GI is pretty amazing, I have to say. Like, it's really, really cool. The real-time GI. Okay, uh, you know what? Let me actually spin the sky around so that I can have some light inside here. Okay, let's see how that looks like. With the... Where's the light? There it is. Like, on the side. with the porthole. Uh, the GI distance looks short. Yeah, it is intentionally short. <laughs> because uh, I made it... I made it... Uh, uh, so, so, yeah, it needs to be less than 10 centimeters, the voxel sizes. So that, so that the, the light doesn't seep through, right? Well, you can see it seeps through slightly, but that's okay. That's acceptable. I mean, it is real time. It is magic after all. But yeah, it doesn't actually do it much. Can I make indirect energy a lot bigger? Let's see what happens now. Uh, it doesn't actually reflect much. But yeah, you can see it. It does look great in the bowl and in the in the cupola. Oh, I'm getting stuck all the time. Oh, this is pretty cool. Like, it is actually lighting up everything around. Maybe I need to bring the energy up. There we go. Okay. But does the seeping through... There it is. Look at that. Look at this now. It's actually oh well there is a lot of stupid artifacts because of the big uh, because it doesn't have enough <laughs> but there is some reflection there it is it is actually reflecting on the uh, from here into the walls that is kind of cool how's the performance i mean it's working fine as you can see uh, so yeah like, for example, that Flex Engine demo that I used, it runs like shit on this computer. <laughs> it does have an old GPU, but, you know, this is impressive. Like, it's super fast. Uh, and the Flex demo, which is this one. And uh, let me just save this. Okay, the Flex demo that I showed a while ago.
is actually quite slow. I don't know if you can see, but the FPS is quite low. Like even if it's the same, like uh, you know, uh, real-time GI. And actually, when you change it, uh, when you change the parameter, like when you change the sun. It takes a long time to for it to, to to rebuild, but of course this one has, you know, really detailed meshes and everything, so you can't really compare. Uh, but still, when it comes to yeah, when you turn off GI with uh, what's the oh yeah F5, there it is. When you turn off GI, you can see how much faster it is. When I turn it on, super slow, and also like if I turn off these lights. There's like F3, I think. Yeah, you can see how slow it is to like recalculate. Turn on. Takes a long time. But yeah, and and uh, in Goto, I don't feel anything. So it is pretty impressive. Uh, stream is buffering. <laughs> uh, oh, oh no. That's sorry. Sorry about that. That was because of the the demo. Must be. Uh, even my 3070 can't reach my monitor FPS. I think the um, the this uh, computer is using 10 something, so uh, older generation. Um, Kalino made an extra amazing add-on, Acid Lib, you can use to view performance and render data. Uh, that's you mean uh, you mean in Forgotto. Yeah, well, I don't have problems right now, so I, I'm just going to keep it like this. 1050 Ti, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> it said, it says somewhere, right? In the in the demo or something. Ah, there it is. It says here. <laughs> yeah, this is my friend's laptop, by the way. It's not mine. Uh, mine uses an even older... GPU, but that's fine because in my in my on my GPU I'm I'm doing uh, I'm developing Shakedown, the rally game, which is like OpenGL, very basic. Anyway, uh, what did I want to say? I wanted to say that yeah, we have something. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna need some docking hatches soon. You can turn it on with F3. The tech demo is really cranked, so it makes sense to be slow. Yeah, it is. I should try. I should try. Uh, but I was getting 500. Oh yeah. Oh yes. You said uh, yesterday that you got, or the other day that you got a really high FPS in Flax. Um, you can find it in the acid lib. Just search performance. Okay. Well, I'm not interested in it right now. Right. I want to make the game. <laughs> But yeah, there is actually a lot of gaps. What is this? Why are the gaps? Is it again? Yes, because this is not aligned. This is not aligned. What's the... 725. This is all aligned. That's good. Uh, this one is... Something is wrong here. Strange. Strange because this should be exact 4.525. 4.5. Wait, did I make it 25 centimeters or no? I definitely made it. Yeah, 25. <laughs> so now it should be on every. Okay, so if I had. Wait, does it snap? Oh, it doesn't snap to grid, it snaps relative. That's the problem. Okay. If you turn on wireframe mode, you could see the alignment better. Uh, where is wireframe?
display wireframe. Ah, there it is. And if I did a side view, of course, there it is. I had never actually used the side view. Nice. And you actually don't rotate when you use right click. That's very useful. Cool. So what do, what do I want to do next? Well, Uh, let's actually turn this module into, let's parent it into a thing, into a add child node. Should it just do nodes? Maybe, because this is only for organization, or should it be... Okay, can I actually manipulate an empty node? Like... If I parent it to this, I can't. No, it doesn't have a transform. So I do actually want to transform then. Uh, add, exp no, what's the, there is some kind of a add, reparent to new node, node 3D. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna make it, let's call it module core. This is going to be the core module. And this should be at zero, zero, zero. Yes, let's put the rest in it. There we go. Okay, so the core module, I can now move it around. Perfect. And this is going to be separate, but now what I can do is I can actually, I could copy this one and put a new one here. Uh, but you know what? Oh, it actually, it actually goes out of the mode if you use a, if you use the middle click. Let's see how this looks like. Okay, just for a test, I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate as well this one. Put it down, just so that I can see how it looks like when you have three different m nodes connected. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna un on a wireframe. Uh, under perspective, you need a transform. Use node 3D. If not, use node. Yeah. Already did that. <clears throat> and yeah, I really love how this, like, you can see the reflections, except they're, <laughs> they're a bit wonky. Uh, yeah, it's because now the GI is a lot stronger. <laughs> I, I really love how this looks like, like it actually reflects from everything. <clears throat> What's up with my voice? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can enter through here. Now I have three modules. Yeah. Uh, it is a little bit annoying that you can see in the distance. You can see the leaking lights. But, you know, when I add clutter, maybe you're not going to even see this distance. I don't know. And then there is one more. By the way, I should make the camera rotation be like completely 3D, not like this vertical. Uh, so that I can actually go through each of the mo uh, modules. Okay, boom. Those are huge modules. I, sh I should make one that is smaller. <clears throat> Let's make a slightly smaller module, which is only composed out of out of small parts. So I'm not going to use any of these. Uh, I'm going to use instead only two of these. And one of this. Uh, 
Yeah, maybe putting the uh, directional light to two times the energy was a mistake. And indirect. Let's give it a five for now. Uh, yeah, I thought there were some more chat messages. Okay. By the way, I remapped to shift space this, just like in in other softwares like Blender. No, in Blender it's actually control space. Yeah, I keep forgetting. Shift space is running. Uh, in Unity it's shift space. Uh, the annoying thing is this <laughs> output. Like, yeah, uh, that it's part of the m viewport. I heard people complain about the same thing. Uh, what is the timeline of project past technology present near future? It's like I should finish it in a week. <laughs> yeah, I I just want to make a small a small like uh puzzle sort of in a station where you can just walk around. You just can fly around and yeah, I don't know, uh douse a fire and something like that. Uh, but I did have an idea a long time ago to make it to make this into like a full Kerbal Space program like game. Uh, I actually have made in Unity. I've made orbital dynamics and everything. It actually works. It actually worked, but I never reached this stage where I had interiors and and space stations. So maybe in the future I'm gonna make a game where it's completely about the space station maintenance but I had a similar system uh, of modules so this is not the first time I'm making this I even had full like docking physics and everything <laughs> uh, anyway uh, I mean in what timeline does your project exist what's the time I, I don't understand you mean what uh, Avengers timeline There's so many gaps everywhere. Yeah, I should turn this into a cupola module as well. So let's turn this into a module. I'm gonna add... It's weird that it has like add child notice here. But then... Uh, then repair to new node is here. Why is it not in the same area? It's weird. Maybe they will add it into a separate area into the same area I mean okay let's do this be part of uh, module cupola and this module is gonna be module small okay and then we're also going to have a spacecraft which will be able to move around but yeah, before that, actually, I'm interested. What happens if you cover all the holes? Uh, oh, the node small is actually middle is there. I should probably move it up. Oh, fuck. Why? Oh, no. <coughs> Why is the pivot over here? I thought that putting a parent means that ah uh, okay okay <laughs> let's not do this then what did i do here uh module core i don't know I made a mistake. I made a mistake and now I'm trying to fix it. Something like this. Yes. Um, there we go. Uh, and the cupola. So when you make a reparent to new node, 
Node 3D. Why does it put it on the on the zero zero? Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, instead I'm gonna add a child node. So I guess you have to do it like this, and then I'm gonna unparent, and then parent it. Yeah, now it's in the same place. Okay, there we go. So this is going to be module uh, cupola. Um, I think he means like, is it in the future year three times? Ah, you mean in game, <laughs> not my own timeline. Uh, well, it's kind of like uh, end of Cold War. Uh, you know, like uh, Mir space station timeline. Yeah, this timeline. This timeline. Wait. This timeline. Something like that. You know. Uh, like a Soviet space station. Um, and... Yeah, so everything goes bad. Have you ever heard about Mir? Like, <laughs> the Mir space station at the end of its life had so many problems. Like, there was a fire, there was a, one spacecraft hit it uh, and ripped a little bit of uh, hull. It made a dent in the hull and yeah, there were so many problems. So I'm kind of inspired by that, by the accidents. Uh, you can actually see it in this picture, like this solar panel here. That was actually cra crashed uh, with the Progress spacecraft. That they were like, like one, one like this one, uh, while they were testing something. So yeah, it's like this is what I'm imagining, and I definitely want to add like clutter like this, so that you know, we have some nice. Uh, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of like stuff on the outside, like these bags, random bags antennas and some arms like for construction yeah anyway uh, lived so long after its planned lifespan yeah exactly that's 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 what I want to achieve with this game like uh, so that you can smell how terrible it smells in the inside uh, anyway yes it looks too good right now, but it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of fucked up, but <laughs> it should look uh, more terrible. Uh, well, of course, Mir didn't have a cupola. That's an ISS thing, but, you know, it just looks so nice and it has this light reflected on the inside. So I'm just, you know, that's, I'm just mixing it up. You know, it's an imaginary spa uh, Russian space station that, that was like much cooler. Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, I wanted to actually make this. Should I turn this into a um, scene? So the problem is now if you make things into scenes all the time, it you it's hard to edit them object by object. Uh, maybe I should also add into this wedge, I should add um, a ring, a docking ring. This is now cool about having a having this, having it as a scene, as a prefab, because now I can add a docking ring into it, like this, oh, oh, you can drag into here, oh no, aha, I guess I need to parent it, that's the problem, okay, and I can put it, oh, why is it, why is it crossing meters now, so this is per scene, I guess, great, cool, I didn't know snapping it works per scene, Okay, so there we go. We can add this and then it's going to be added to all of them. There it is. We have this docking ring. Uh, simple, make local again, then save it back to scene. Yeah, maybe I should actually turn it into uh, uh, scenes. Module, let's call it module small. I'm going to turn it into save branches scene uh, module small uh, 
then I can easily make a copy let's put it here I just want to see how it looks like when it's completely when there's nodes uh, modules all over the place okay uh, and uh, let's see Yeah, I can't see the I can't see the ball now. The sphere, there it is. There is a slight gap, so I'm gonna just do it like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the other side. Okay, so how does this look like from the inside now? I definitely want to have another sphere here so that when you okay let's turn this into a branch as well okay and then they definitely want to have another module that is sort of that looks kind of like this uh, and I'll show you why I'll show you why like here in the in here when I run this let's see how it looks like um, let's enter through here total darkness inside it's hard to hard to fly around wow it is so dark nice uh, and I actually went through the ball I didn't even see it so now, now I need a flashlight. I need the interior lighting as well. So this is the ball, right? I'm in the ball. Am I? <laughs> no, this is the hull. The ball is over here. I didn't even see the ball. There it is. Okay, so I can go into this module. I can go there. I can go into the cupola. Uh, this is so nice that everything is dark. And this is why I wanted it like there so that you can see it from the outside like oh there is some module over there that's cool and maybe I can put some spacecraft on the side ah, yeah so that you like get this spatial awareness okay let's make a let's make a little difference let's make the cupola a little bit taller um, uh, sorry um, not much point making things into separate scenes if you don't need to instantiate multiples of them. Exactly. Uh, but for now, while I'm testing, um, while I'm testing, I'm gonna just use it. So it's it's always easy to just make, as you said, it's easy to make it later. Okay, so this is not gonna work because it's gonna mess up my normal. <laughs> uh, so maybe I'm just gonna take everything and scale up like this. Uh, ugly. Is that ugly? Can you notice the stretching? No, nobody's gonna notice the stretching. You know, you have you have only seen it on the stream, but you know, no one else knows that it just stretched it up. There we go. And now I keep the because if I did this right, if I just moved it up, you would see that this vertex is like now pointing like it's it's wrong because this one has a different angle than than this yeah anyway there we go perfect i could even move this down a bit hmm, i can't move down no it doesn't work Mm, it would be nice to to be able to but I think this is good okay let's re-export and let's see there it is it has rescaled everything works let's test it I like this workflow I like this workflow now it is a little bit confusing this exporting of meshes and stuff it's strange but you know, once you get used to it, I think it's gonna be good. Okay, the tube is here. There is the... Uh-huh, yeah, I can see a lot more. I can even see the hull. 
I should add a glass as well. Uh, yeah, definitely. I can see a lot, a lot more. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Okay, that is that is done. So what did I say? Uh, Reimport assets in a better way. Done. Turn all parts into scenes. Prefabs done. Assemble a little station done. So I did everything. Uh, so I'm gonna add a few more ad sets. Like, uh, what should I do? Yeah, let's make some solar panels. You can use just a blender file. No need to export it all. Uh, I still prefer this. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of having ever because blender file will have a lot of garbage as well blender file is going to be full of shit and not i don't want to export everything uh but when i just export glb i don't know i just want to be safer like this uh i prefer it this way okay anyway uh we have this what did i oh yeah i wanted to make a hatch as well so that I can close off all the stuff that I don't use. Um, so yeah, I have. Um, I should make a proper docking mechanism. But I already do have a little one that I used in a different project where I made the full docking working. And I actually have this, uh, I have this somewhere let me actually see what it looks like because i completely forgot about it uh what's the name of it uh, an orbiter yeah that's that's the one assets art uh docking rings okay let me import can i drag and drop can i drag and drop no okay that doesn't work yet in blender <laughs> Okay, I need to import FBX. Uh, let me actually make a new collection for that. Okay, I'm gonna get into this FBX. Tada! Docking rings, import. Aha! Uh -huh. Petal. What is this? Let's see. Uh, ah! Ah! This is the. That's the docking ring. Right, this is a different style. <laughs> this is not the Russian probe and drogue style. This is a... Uh... Ah, yes. This was actually the one that extends. Like the soft soft docking. Like a APAS ring. Yeah, and this is like a petal that can move. Yeah, right. I remember I was testing this, and it actually worked really well in uh, in Unity. But I'm not gonna use that one. Okay, um, old docking ring. I am actually going to make a Russian style with with a probe and drogue, and that one looks like this. Uh, let me shut down Twitter. Uh, Russian, no, let's go with probe and drogue docking, there it is. Yeah, there's an Apollo one, which looks like this. Uh, and there is, a, uh, there is a Russian one, which this is all... Yeah, this is the first Russian one, which didn't have docking, which didn't have a hatch. This is the new one. Uh, so basically you have this probe that hits the drogue, this is the drogue, and it's, um, it gets locked in here and then the, the probe retracts and locks the, the, the docking ring. Uh, because it's, it, this is much simpler to do in a physics engine when you have this instead of the petals. Uh, yeah, there it is. This is a nice representation. This is actually two different systems. This is the one that's used on this between station modules, and this is the one that's used by Soyuz. Uh, yeah, here it is. This one. 
so yeah this is the docking ring and the latches the latches are these tiny things here this 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 that's that's the one that creates a hard mate and this one is what is used for like just initial contact and then you have the two hatches with that open so yeah i want to make something like that there it is somebody made it in uh for Kerbal Space Program, I guess. Probe and Drogue sound. <laughs> it is, it is NSFW, definitely. Um, uh, because, so this is, a, there's a funny story about Apollo Soyuz test project. I don't know if you know it. It was when, um, when the Soyuz and an Apollo docked together. Uh, it was like the first cooperation between the U.S. and uh, and the Soviet Union at the time, and so they were discussing about which docking system to use, and they realized that you know this is this is too sexual, so you know it's gonna be like <laughs> it's gonna be like okay, who is gonna fuck who, right? Sorry for the language, but. You know, it's like if if they put this one on the Russian side, then, you know, they fuck the U.S. <laughs> and if they put it on the uh, U.S. side, they're going to, you know, then U.S. is going to fuck so, the, the Russians. So what they did come up with is they come up with the androgynous system, as they call it. Uh, uh, Apollo Soyuz docking. Uh, they made a system which is ambiguous. Uh, so here, wait, where is the good? There it is. This is a good picture. Uh, here, you can see that it has these petals. It has three petals and they look exactly the same on both sides. So nobody, you know, fucks anybody. Uh, but, uh, you know, you just slide uh, you, you, th these three, uh, these three things here called petals they're actually just used for an aligning right so that when you hit you know they mesh together like you know i'm showing it with fingers but it doesn't work because you don't see my fingers uh but yeah you can imagine how these two things uh mesh along uh but the thing is that you still have active and a passive because you need to have a thing that will uh actively like try to latch to the passive one and they actually decided to make to put the passive side on the soyuz and the active side on the apollo because apollo had this like special docking adapter right so they could put it so they're they're not like you know engaging engaging sexually but they still have the active and the passive <laughs> uh, yeah there this is the this is the docking it kind of looks like uh, it looks like the Soyuz dock ring, right? But it has the pedals. It doesn't use the probe and drogue. Uh, so yeah, that's the funny story how they decided to not fuck each other. Uh, there you you can see them mated here. Wow, ten thousand pixels, nice. Uh, this is actually uh, yeah here you can see them mated here with uh, one side. You can see the pedals from the Soyuz and pedals from the. Apollo. Uh, I should have used the a 69 system. <laughs> yeah. They're scissoring. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they later they used the same one for a similar system for the shuttle. So when shuttle was docking to the sp uh, to Mir space station, uh, they actually made a, an advanced, a, a more advanced version, which has, uh, which has three pedals, but they're pointing inside, so they take up less space, and uh, and they can actually be removed when you're when you dock, so when you dock, these actually get removed, the pedals, I think, if I remember correctly, and it's actually a much better, and the and the new, so that's kind of you can say that it's an evolution of the of the Apollo Soyuz docking ring. 
and later they actually yeah today they're actually using the same one uh, uh the the well not the same one but an evolution of that one for the for both the orion and what is it called i think it's called lids docking or that's the yeah uh, because it's like a low impact docking system but i think it's not even oh yeah it's called the international docking standard i think that's the one nasa docking system oh they just call it the nasa docking system now okay yeah you can see the demonstration of it oh it's not even the full picture oh it is okay good yeah you can see that this upper part is the active and that one moves on, on gimbals and it actually aligns to the lower one and then at the end the the this ring retracts and you have a hard mate so it's like uh you know it's not a probe and drogue the problem with the probe and drogue, uh, the good thing about the probe and drogue, it's a very simple system. The problem with it is that it takes up a lot of space because on you know, the interior, because this hatch is actually going to be inside uh, this whole mechanism, right? If when you open, because this is part of the hatch, uh, this one opens on the inside and you have this giant thing that occupies all the space inside, right? So that's the problem with the probe and drogue system uh, used for docking. NASA docking system. International... Internet is implementation. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, they actually have a standard. This is the standard, which shows that what are the dimensions and, and how the latches should work. But then the NASA is the actual implementation that is used on Orion, on... Uh, uh, it's used on um, Dragon. The SpaceX Dragon, SpaceX Dragon, and yeah, uh, there it is. The Crew Dragon and the Starliner as well in the future. Hopefully it's going to fly. <laughs> there it is. This is the docking system here. Uh, here you can see the three pedals. Anyway, but yeah, I'm going to go with the probe and drogue. Uh, so... The problem with the probe and drogue as well, implement, implementing it, is it has a lot of states. Uh, because you have to, extending the probe, you have retracting the probe, you have aligning, <laughs> you have, you know, uh, capturing the latches and stuff. But yeah, let's, let's do some, you know... Uh, Okay, let's make a very basic model of it. A very basic one for the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to put it in here, in this one. No, or should I put it on the bottom? Maybe I should... Yeah, let's actually make a copy. Okay. Uh, and this one doesn't have... What's the actual inside measurement? I have no, yeah, it is actually 80. This is actually the same as Soyuz. 80, um, Soyuz has an internal diameter of 80 centimeters, and this is actually 80, right? It has four here and four here, four cubes. So yeah, it is 80. It's slightly bigger than 80. Uh, so yeah, we are going to have a one side, which is going to be a cone. We can do a cone. Uh, we're going to make it very low poly. <laughs> Eight sides. Why not? I don't know. Uh, and uh, how many sides does the Soyuz docking thing has? Oh yeah, it has this crown. I remember I actually modeled this back in the day, but it was so complicated to model the whole thing. Uh, yeah, let's do a uh, eight-sided. Uh, okay, thanks for the stream. I've got ahead. Yeah. No problem. Uh, I'm gonna have this this thing, and then we're gonna have the probe in the middle, and I can actually use reuse the same thing for the probe. Perhaps, uh, let me put it on zero. Uh, this is gonna be part of the hatch, right? And the hatch. Yeah, it actually continues all the way, all the way until 
like okay i'm gonna do it like this and then it turns into a more polygon more polygonal subdivide okay i'm gonna do it like this and then i'm gonna actually attach it to this so that it's the same size uh why does snapping get disabled every time Okay, so there we go. We have uh, the the probe, one part the crown, uh, and um, yeah, let's put it something like this. And then we're gonna have the drogue. No, sorry, the probe. Uh, I'm going to fill it up here. And then it has this little head <laughs> on top. You can't escape the sexual connotations while making this. It's impossible. <laughs> okay. There there's my there's my probe. And I'm actually going to split it. Uh, or should I split it later? Maybe I should split it later. No, let's let's actually split it right away. Uh, yeah, it's P to split the selection. And let me turn origins. Make it like something like that. Okay. So we have... Oh, why is it over here? I'm going to put it in here. Uh... Docking port probe um, hatch, and this is going to be docking port uh, probe. Okay, let's make it slightly smaller. I'm gonna scale it, and I'm gonna put on the bottom. Oh shit! Something is wrong. Why is it slanted? Oh, this is slanted as well. Oh, damn. Why does it have one degree of rotation? <laughs> damn it. Okay. Well, now I completely misaligned the whole thing. Okay, I have to re reattach it. Soviet technology, what can I say? Uh, have you heard about the Russian uh, lander that crashed into the planet because it forgot to, tur uh, forgot to turn around? Uh, again, suppose I should have said I've got to the orbit, yeah. Uh, again, uh, uh, IDSS docking module available in Sketchfab CC with attribution. Oh! I didn't even think about it. Idea says sketch fab. Wait, uh, oh, free, free, nice. Wait, is it is it by NASA? No, it's by somebody. That's cool. I uh, I bet it doesn't fit my style at all. Uh, thanks for that. I mean, I can use it as a reference. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's actually, it's actually not high poly at all. Except for these, whoa, these rings have too many polygons, but these, uh, struts, I mean. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Thanks for that. 
<laughs> I could actually use it for a docking ring as a texture. I like the I like these orange seals. Thanks for that. Okay, anyway, let me go back to Blender. Okay, we have the probe. Uh, and yeah, of course, I want to make it into a hatch. So it's going to have the other side as well. Oh, it does already have its other side, but let's make it thick. Okay. And I can also make it a little bit like, you know, like this. Wait, what's wrong with this? Oh, fuck. This is also not aligned properly. Okay, uh, did I forget to take one piece? What is this? Why doesn't it select the whole thing? Ah, because it's a weird... Uh, I see. Okay, I'm gonna have to select it like this. Yeah, I did this too soon. Uh, did I forget? Okay, let me repeat this. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna destroy this. Yeah, I did. I I did make a mistake here, somewhere. Uh, I didn't put these down. There's something wrong with this blender, like it's... My blender doesn't work like this. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. How can I actually prevent it from manipulating? Blender, turn off... Um, uh, move with right click. How can I turn that off? How can I, yeah, disable click to grab. This is super annoying. Super, super annoying. I don't want to do that. Uh, this is how to stop it from you when in two point. Hey, thankfully the change is easy. 3D view. Move. 3D view tool move. Ah, yes, you disable this object move. Okay, I have to go into the key map. Key map. 3D view, 3D view global, where do I find it, object, object mode, select, uh, view tool move, view tool move, you turn this off, okay let's try now. It still works. <laughs> so I didn't do anything. Object move, 3D view tool move. Drag left mouse. Oh, you still have to do it. How to stop? Ah, in Blender 2.8. Wait. Key map 3D view, 3D view global. 3D view global. What's the name of it? Move, move, move. There's two moves. Keyboard and mouse. I guess it's the mouse move. There it is. Yeah, great. Okay, this is how I like it. Nice. Okay, so now the right click doesn't move. That's great. Because I want to explicitly use G to move. Uh, I prefer that much more. All right. Um, 
so let's me repeat this thing what I did with making a port fillet inset there is actually a really good side view on the Russian space web space web uh, I remember there was a Soyuz docking where it showed the side view as well but now I'll yeah I had those on my computer I have like some really good references there uh, docking systems sign in to access the site oh it's actually sign in only oh I didn't know that so it changed the thing okay Maybe it's one of these images. So not everything is locked. The only some things are locked. Fucking. Docking system. Oh, it doesn't allow me to see this. Oh, and this image is super small. Interesting. I'm pretty sure I had, okay, well, maybe I downloaded images from before when it wasn't, it when it was free. Okay. Uh, oh, there it is. This is actually the one. Oh no, this is from NASA Space Flight Forum. Okay. There, this is a really good one. Oh, this one is like low poly. Somebody made this 3D model. There, this is a great view because you can see the side view of the hatch. The crown is actually a lot, a lot further than in my case, but it's fine. I'm not making the Soyuz docking system uh, yeah you can see that it has this pouch here on the bottom that is what I remember from you know making it a long time ago it's kind of like this okay and I should definitely make it like at least 10 centimeters thick <laughs> so it doesn't collide so it doesn't let through the you know uh, SDFGI Let's make it smooth as well. Okay, and for the beginning, I'm going to just use metal plate. Uh, yeah, that's okay. And yeah, and let's do the other side as well. So this is the probe. You know what, is there some image a good image of the docking system. I could just project it. <laughs> there's the there's the drogue. This is the probe. I could actually just take one of the photos because most of these photos are public domain. I could just project it on top. Why not? There, like this. This is a big picture. Let's try. Let's try using this. And I don't even need to make it big. This is going to be awful in, in <laughs> because I'm using PBR. It's much easier in my own engine because I don't use PBR. Uh, okay, let's see. This is low resolution anyway. Uh, let's make it like this. Uh, how do I make it square? There it is. Actually, let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, 
Okay, now I can use this one. Uh, open file explorer. I'm just gonna use that. Copy it into my assets. Pick. And then use that directly. Just beautiful. Let's copy this docking port. Pick. Beautiful. Look at that. And now I just projected from view. And there we go. <laughs> we have a perfect representation of the docking port. Perfect. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this picture. Nice. Maps perfectly. I could also map this one. There we go. It's just it's just perfect. Perfection it has been achieved. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's really hard to like see the mesh now. <laughs> uh, let's see how that looks like in game. Okay, so we have the probe, we have the hatch. Let's check the pivots. The pivots should be somewhere meaningful in the middle of the hatch. This origin is fine. The probe. This should retract and like this. So that's good. Okay. Save everything, export GLTF tube. Let's see what happens. Nothing has happened, which is good. Okay, now I have to uh, re export the stuff. Tube GLB. There's the docking pick. How does it look like here? Wow, it's perfect. <laughs> it actually looks really good, surprisingly. Uh, for it just being a picture. Okay, I have to export mesh paths uh, into meshes, and it's only these three. Tube docking port ring. Actually, no, I'm not going to change the docking port ring. Oh shit, I didn't name it correctly. Uh, I forgot to rename the meshes. Yeah, this sucks. This sucks. Okay. So this should actually be not a copy, but a clone. I made a mistake there. So this is a clone. And this is... Should be called... Where is the mesh? Docking port hatch. No, that's the name of the object. Where is the mesh? There it is. Uh, this should be called docking port hatch. And this should be called docking port probe. Select objects. Export.
save meshes. There it is. We only have the hatch and the probe now. Cool. Okay. That's it, right? Yeah. So what I can do now is I can create a hatch. Eh, it's too dark actually. Doesn't work so well. Why is it so dark though? Doesn't make any sense. Maybe it's because of the... Okay. Let's see. Is it because I have a... The problem is that I also have this one. I should not have any more normals. I'm not going to have any normals and I'm not going to have any roughness. Yeah, instead it's going to be middle roughness. Or, yeah, let's not make it rough actually. Let's make it completely rough. That's what I mean. Um, and this one should also have a mesh, uh, a material. Okay, so just black. That's fine. Save. Save this, right? Yes. And I'm going to export this into the tube. There it is. It has changed. It is bright. That is perfect. Nice. Oh, it has a weird UV. <laughs> okay, let's just re-UV it. Uh, we're going to project from view. That's it. Just going to make it, I don't know. That's that's the the whole thing. Super pixelated. For now, for now. Uh, export, export, export. There we go. Nice. Okay, let's now inherit. No, wait. How am I gonna do this? Oh yeah, I make local make local and then I'm gonna take the probe I'm gonna put it inside a hatch and oh I should have called it hatch I should have called it drogue uh, well it's the end now um, okay yeah and I didn't actually remap this uh, so yeah uh, yeah, I'm gonna just take this one. I'm gonna turn it into... Uh, save branches scene, docking port. Let's call it probe. Hatch probe. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna put it outside. And that's gonna be this. Yeah, so we have, it's now separated into a separate scene. Can I actually move this on a surface? <laughs> does does uh, Godot have that? Like, can I like, in uh, in Unity, you have like Shift Control, and then it will put it on the surface. Okay, and then we're gonna have the drogue. So it looks kind of funny in in Godot. Uh, okay, let's do the drogue. So the drogue is going to be basically the same thing, except, should I rotate it or should I keep it the same orientation? Let's keep it the same orientation actually. The drogue is going to be a hole in the middle, have a hole in the middle. No, you know what? I'm going to flip it around for now. 
because we already have this made. So it's the same thing except that it goes inside like this. And it's not going to be Okay, it's going to be a little bit deeper. But the whole thing, not just this like this. Okay, maybe maybe like this. How does that look like? I think it should also be bigger. Doesn't look that bad. Okay, so when it contracts, when this thing contracts, it should perfectly fit inside. And that is not how it looks like. It should actually be able to mate like this. Oh, this is still rotated. What the hell? Why does it keep rotating? What's wrong? Did they revert? No, this is good. Oh, it's because of this. This one is incorrectly rotated. I just copied that one. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to make I'm going to project the ring. Uh I'm going to make it I'm, I'm going to make the material use docking ring as I did right before I realized I, I got fucked yeah there it is something like that but let's make it slightly bigger so that we have the latches okay something like this let's actually repaint this so it doesn't look so screwed up uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a cylinder projection and I'm gonna move this somewhere else like here no that looks terrible Maybe like this. Okay. So yes, there we have a new docking ring. <laughs> Looks fancy. I'm going to, of course, improve the texture later. But for now, let's just make it work. Uh, so the docking ring is should now fit exactly with this one. And inside it is the hatch, which is going to fit. Yeah. So I actually need to have it go all the way. Yeah, this is not enough. It's going to be a lot deeper. It's going to be a lot deeper like this. And this is going to be a lot wider as well. like this okay and then I have to also push the back side I have to rescale it and push the back side like this so that's about that uh, right how does that look like <laughs> it looks terrible but I hope it's gonna work Okay, so this is docking port hatch drogue. So we have the probe and then we have the drogue. And the thing is that inside this drogue Inside the drogue is where the this little probe is going to fit inside. So, actually, this is not entirely correct. Uh, 
it should be kind of like this but then have a little extension where the probe actually fits in so yeah kind of like this and making the collider for this is gonna be <laughs> is gonna be the worst okay so there we go we have the probe now the drogue uh, and yeah that should all be part of the hatch that opens to the side like this so I think I actually have yeah I think it's I think it's actually too big I need to make it big I need to make it smaller but it's something okay so you have the drogue rotation zero uh, and this is another copy of the same thing select objects select objects export there we go and we have by the way the hatch should have a docking ring as well like okay yeah let's actually put a uh, let me get the drogue. The dro oh yeah, I need to export the meshes as well. Ah, I didn't. I didn't name the mesh. I keep forgetting this. Uh, mesh name should be dog import hatch drogue. Good thing is that there is only one solid object. There's not. A, there's no any moving parts. Two. Okay. Export. Oh, let me just. We set this meshes uh, drogue. There it is. That's it. Uh, oh, and does it actually have a collider? It doesn't have a collider because I completely forgot to add a collider. How amazing is that? Yeah, you see, this is okay. I'm gonna make it coal. And for now, this is going to have a call as well. But actually, finally, I think I don't think it should have it. Okay, let's see if what happens now. Is it going to get updated? No, of course it's not going to get updated because this is now broken. Okay, so I'm going to drag in the new. Okay, I did reimport automatically, right? And yeah so I'm gonna break this up make local no not that I made wrong thing local okay I'm gonna make this thing right there it is docking port hatch into a scene And I'm going to make this oh. Dock import hatch into a scene. But I'm going to parent the probe as well. Uh, say branch of scene. And I'm going to override the probe. Yes, I want to override it. Okay. So let's make this transform zero dot. Okay, good. And I'm going to make this transform as well. Zeroed out. This is super annoying that you have to do this. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, and now I can delete my tube. And now I have the docking port hatch. Gonna delete this one. 
but I'm going to put so here's the interesting thing. Oh, look, the docking ports now have <laughs> have the correct material. Nice. Uh, let's try to put to all the docking rings. I'm going to put I'm going to add the drogue. No, sorry, not this one. Tube 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 this one and then we have a docking port oh it doesn't want to open cool i hope it doesn't destroy my scene uh i need to go into the docking ring docking ring okay let's add into the docking ring i'm gonna try to add the drogue Okay, so let's see what happens now. So this is this adds all the yeah there it is. Now we have drogues in all the docking rings. That means that my my station is completely sealed from all the sides, which is not a good thing. There it is. <laughs> now we have drogues everywhere. Let me actually add a light in here. Uh, create new child node light Omni light yeah so that they can see something and for some reason lights have 3d and oh that's because they inherit a 3d node uh, let's make the yeah let's definitely have a shadow and I'm gonna make the size where's the radius radius energy does the radius depend on the energy size uh, what uh, does it say anything about the size of the light in Godot you're only available for Omni light increasing this value will make the light fade out slower this can be used to simulate area lights ah this is just the size not the radius but where is the radius actually? Does it have a radius? Radius is an omni. Uh, ah, <laughs> I didn't see that there's a, oh, I see. Cool, okay, there, there it is. Okay, we don't need a big radius. Only so it covers the, the sphere. Okay, cool. So I, there's no way to enter now because yeah there's no way to enter the, the the sphere because it's everything is covered in hatches and the problem is that they're all pointing inside uh yeah let's just try it let's just see see the station from the outside oh no Oh no, oh my god, it's a corrupted again. Yep, 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 this is, this is good though. This has happened before. Uh, great, okay, if this breaks my... If this destroys everything, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna quit Godot. And, and move to Unity. Or, or I'm gonna try flex because this error is just annoying everything worked I was just I was just for a moment thinking like oh Godot is such a good engine I finally figured it out and then there's a, and now it's gonna tell me corrupted corrupted scenes for sure No, it doesn't say anything. Okay, so it's not corrupted, I guess. All right, now it works. So, for some reason, it just didn't show half of the objects, but that's fine. Now it works. Okay. Uh, yeah, there is the there is our hatches. 
Uh, I can't. The only way to get into the station now is through this side hatch. If I can actually go through. Yeah, there it is. I can actually go through. But, you know, it doesn't have... You know what's annoying? That I don't actually have any windows on the hatches. Yeah. I should make... Yeah, I should put some hatches as well that have windows. What's the error? The error is... Uh, I don't know. Well, it works now. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it doesn't correctly load GLBs and then everything gets corrupted. But this time it loaded. So that looks nice. We have some... We have some drogues. Drogues. That's cool. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I don't actually want to add to all of the... Yeah. So, can I actually make some of these? Like, the problem is... How do I customize this prefab? Because it doesn't show. There is a thing which is like editable chill... Okay, look, let me, let me submit everything. Okay. added docking probes new assets workflow okay uh, is it possible to just remove some of the hatches that's my question Um, so it has this thing of editable children, but what does that mean? Does that mean you can override override things like this? Oh, I need to make this editable as well. Editable children. Static body. Oh, no, not that. This thing. Uh, no, this thing. Docking hatch. Yeah, let's say that I put it like on the side, like this. And then I have to do the same thing with, ah, yeah, this is super annoying. Okay, if I make this editable. No, you know what? I'm just going to open up everything. But let me see if this actually works first. Make editable children and I have to make how small editable and then I have to make the docking ring editable and then I have the hatch. There it is. I open it up. Looks cool. Let's see what happens. Uh, I always save my GLB as a Tekken and then just delete the GLB. What's the Tekken? I don't know. Is this a different uh, approach? Okay, we can. Ah, oh, it's hard to control. Okay. We have an open hatch. Cool, I can actually go through it. And inside here. You know, the it's annoying that the camera gets stuck. I actually want to bounce a bit. I should add a, a physics material. Nice, I like this. I like this quite a lot. Okay, so that does work. I can make it editable. Okay, but let's not do this. Let's go back. Oh, I can't go back. Nice. Uh, can I actually revert? Oh, I did actually go back. But I want to... 
unedit editable children so what happens when you edit this docking port and then you say you know what I don't want to actually make it editable disabling will cause all properties of the node to be reverted to default but it did not go back to default because this is uh, now moved uh, I think this is probably a bug because it didn't revert it didn't revert <coughs> interesting uh, or did it maybe it did but I was editing the wrong thing <laughs> cupola okay let's collapse the cupola as well no it still is locked here uh, Okay, well, that's that's a bug, I'm pretty sure, because this one closed. This one still stayed open. Ah, no, it's still there. It's still wedged inside. That's definitely not the default behavior. Uh, let's see, let's see, is it there? Aha, it does actually work in game, but not in editor. So maybe I just need to go to some other scene maybe close main and now go back to main there it is, it, has, it is fixed now uh, TSCN is just Godot's file extension for its scene uh, oh, that's what you wrote I will save my GLB as a TSCN and then just delete the GLB ah yeah, I see, I see what you mean But I mean, I still need the GLB. Anyway, um, yeah, I actually wanted to open up all the all the docking ports. So not this one, but the docking ring. Yeah, let's let's actually open all of them up. Uh, why can't I move? I can. It just was got fucked okay something like this right it shouldn't be too something like that because this docking thing is actually huge in real life uh, you can see it you can even see it in this picture I think wait so so use hatch uh drogue you can see it in some of the images there it is look how huge it is. look how big it is this is the hatch uh yeah and you, it takes up a lot of space so that's 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 intended okay let me save this so now all of them are yeah so now all of them are open Oh, they're all open inside. <laughs> okay, they all opened towards the middle. That's the pro. Okay, let's uh, go to my sphere. Sp sphere. Uh, whole sphere. Okay, yeah, the problem is that <laughs> they all open towards the same location. <laughs> yeah, I think that this sphere is too small. Uh, I need to rotate them so that they don't collide with each other. Uh, yeah, this is yeah, this is perfect representation of of what I want from the game. <laughs> it's completely intended. I need to interleave them like this. In real life, I think they open 45 degrees, like like this way. 
so that they don't actually open into other openings. But I think I actually may need to make the sphere bigger because in real life I think it's it is actually bigger. Uh, yeah, I still can't access. This one is still overlapping. This here. Is that part of this? Yes, it is. Okay, can I put it somewhere where it's not gonna... Ah, this is... <laughs> this is a mess. Hey, your rally game looks really pretty. Thank you. So this one opens to the side. This one should open... Uh, let's go... Uh, wait, this one is there. This one should go up. This one should go down. Let's do it like this. So upside, up, no, is this up? This one, yes, up. No, it is going to the side. It should go up. Up, down. Yeah, I don't think it's possible to actually... Okay. <laughs> well... I have down, up and down. Then this one... Yeah, this is actually impossible, I think. This is like Rubik's Cube, basically. Something is going to get blocked, whatever you do. Yeah. Except if it's on the side. But the problem is that the alignment is going to be wrong. Okay, let's try... For now, let's just try making it... You know, 45 degree like this. So the, at least they can pass through. Yeah, this one is now clashing. Which one is this? This is... It's it's a bit weird that it doesn't show you what the outline of sub-object is. Uh, you know, in Unity we have this like orange outline, which is actually pretty nice. This is really hard to see what you have selected. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work. Okay, let's just keep it like this. And see how it looks like from the inside. Uh, so, did you figure out how to prevent texture duplication and import? I did, because I'm just... In, uh, I am uh, exporting a single GLB. I did explain it on the beginning of the stream, though. Uh, I'm exporting a single GLB and instead of multiple GLBs. So you only have one texture. And uh, yeah, and then what I do is for each of the meshes inside the GLB, I export them as resources. Uh, and if you go into, there it is, here are all the meshes. So this resources ensure that they're not going to get copied. So uh, what I mean is that when I copy things around in the scene, they're not going to like copy the date of the mesh, but they're actually going to reference the original model so that they can now change the model and re-export it. And then it's going to be updated automatically, which is perfect. Okay. So yeah, uh, what did I want? Oh yeah, I wanted to go into...
the game and let's go through the top okay <laughs> so we have this yeah I can't pass actually I can't go through <laughs> it's impossible uh, there no it just gets stuck and I'm completely stuck now yeah I need to make the sphere bigger so that the catches can fit but this is funny okay the cool thing is that I can see hatches now everywhere there it is there's one hatch I need a flashlight though so that I can see them but yeah the this is completely cramped now This looks cool. Uh, I see. Thanks for the explanation. Yeah. I do have a more detailed explanation in the beginning of the stream. You know, let's make a little flashlight that I can turn on and off. Uh, let's see. Camera. Let's turn this into... Let's call this the player. Uh, and on the player I have the spotlight which is right now turned off yeah so I want to actually turn it on the player yeah it's actually the camera but that has the script so let's let's add this just just put everything in the same script huh? Uh, no, let's make a new script. Can I make a new script in here? That's the question now. Is it going to be, be uh, automatically imported? Okay, flashlight. CS. Uh, and let's use the same stuff. And let's do a... We have a class. Uh, whoops and this is gonna inherit uh, this is gonna inherit a light light 3d I guess and it's gonna be called flash light okay and I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna reference the same thing but process what is it no 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 not system diagnostics um yeah process no there is actually an input is key pressed yeah i need to grab an event can you actually get key down i much prefer that no okay <laughs> i do have to do the input then so I'm going to do input. Can you just put it like this? No. Can I override add debugger display? No. Uh, what does it complain about? Does not contain a constructor that takes zero arguments. What? Why does it need a constructor that takes zero arguments? It should be by default there. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's see if that compiles. Did it compile automatically? Or do I need to add it into the pro fail to build project? Okay, there it is. What does it say? Uh, execution failed. Where do I see the problems? One error. P compiling. It doesn't tell me anything. Great. 
Transient parent has another exclusive child. What? What does that even mean? I think it's probably compilation that failed. I don't understand what this means. Light 3D does not contain a constructor. Okay, so maybe... Okay, let's see. Create new script. Let's do it through here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's let's delete this. Delete. Move to recycle bin. Okay, I'm gonna create a new script. It's gonna be called flashlight, uh, and it's gonna inherit template. Oh, no default. It doesn't have that. Inherits. Aha, there it is. Light. Light 3D. Oh, it cannot inherit Light 3D. I see. It can only inherit these ones. I guess I'm gonna have to inherit an OmniLight. No, well, it's not an OmniLight. It's actually a flashlight. It's actually a spotlight. Spotlight. Can I inherit? Why can't I inherit Light 3D? Because it doesn't have a zero argument. Okay, so spotlight. And then... But does the node actually... Can you... Enable. Activate. What's, what's the name of it? What is this? Toggle visibility. Visibility. Visible is false okay so maybe it can be just a node but it's okay i i can have with the spotlight uh and then i can override oh override that's what i should what i was supposed to do input okay so for the input i'm gonna say if this is the stupid way of referencing it if event how does it work i need to remember now if event is oh is key event keyboard oh event how does it work when you press on a button go to press button from code click a button how to visually press a button emit signal uh, got to let's just on key down <laughs> using input event if event is input event key that's the name of it great input event key there it is Okay, then E pressed. If E pressed and E key code key is key F. Oh, well, I have and. No, it's not key. It's is it is it not key code uh, key code okay now it works it didn't work with the end uh, then toggle visibility basically wait a minute i made a wrong i made a wrong decision uh this should not change <laughs> what did i do I changed, I modified the wrong thing. It's this uh, visibility. Visible is not visible. Can I do that? Uh, 
Let's see what happens. Okay, spotlight. I'm gonna attach script flashlight. Possible cyclic resource inclusion. What? Wait, what is this doing now here? Where is my... What the fuck? Where did where did the flashlight now disappear? Oh shit. Did I accidentally override something? And I forgot to save. That's that's the problem when you have both scripting in in one program and the other. Shit, I think that this got overridden. Okay, well, let's do this again. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Uh, did it. Did I not put it somewhere else accidentally? No. That's... That's it, right? I made a mistake. Yeah, I, I overrode something. Cool. Very nice. So... This inherits... Spotlight. Okay, and now we're gonna have the input. What the fuck? Okay, let's just try this. I save, I go back. That's it, it saved. Okay, so now I go if... event is input key event if e pressed and e key code is key f uh, then it's going to be visible is not visible Okay, let's just save it just in case. <laughs> Again. Possible cyclic inclusion. What the hell? Of what? Oh, it works. There it is, it works. F, pressing F, now turns on the flashlight. Okay, the flashlight is pretty small though. Can barely see it. You can see the GI working, which is pretty impressive. Let's make it bigger. Um, Okay, it's more usable now. This thing is flashing. Ah, it's because the two docking rings are meshing together. The weird thing is that the flashlight is as bright as the sun. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, yeah, let's say added flashlights. The flashlights and docking and port hatches. Okay, anything. Uh, something else? Um, yeah, okay. So let's, now that we have a little bit something interesting. Uh, yeah, model docking probes, docking hatches. Okay, I will have to resize the sphere and make it fit uh, some, <laughs> yeah, resize the sphere, the sphere node. Uh, model stocking hatches, I did that. Uh, and resize the sphere. And then I want to add a few solar panels. I don't know if I should do that today, or I wanted to try to make the locomotion with bouncing, but yeah, maybe some other time. And yeah, of course, I need to have some props. Okay, so anyway, uh, what is it? Probe. And let's try to resize sphere. This is actually completely procedurally generated. And not completely, but relatively. It's not actually geometry noted, but I did make it. Yeah, I can easily rescale it. That's the point. Okay, uh, it does use a boolean. So let's align these two. What's the size? Uh, zero, 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 six. And I want to make it fit into a two meter sphere. There it is. So let's actually move these hatches outside. Uh, so that, hmm. Yeah, the thing is that it would be great if I put this, the ports, because they need to attach to the edges. Yeah, I'm gonna make a little uh, I'm gonna ruin everything <laughs> because I'm gonna move the origin point of the docking probe. I'm gonna move it to the side. So now, why? Because two different docking rings actually fit together. Th that's the point where they kiss, right? Let's call it like that. So that is going to be on the two meter mark here. Okay, and now that is going to be the same with hatches with these ones. Uh, oh, and now this is actually rotated. And this has a wrong rotation. And it should also be 90. No, it should be like this. So practically what that means, yeah, I did move it downwards. That's good. Uh, and Yeah, and also on the sides, I have the two sides, but it doesn't matter because I'm only going to resize this. So, okay, what is this? Why does it not work? Okay, there it is. Uh, yeah, so if I risk, is this actually enough? I doubt this is enough. So this is the old size, this is the new size. Old size, new size. Is that actually enough for for the catch, hatches not to collide? Hmm. 
Old size, new size. Old size, new size. Old size, new size. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is going to be enough space. Maybe I'm going to need to make it even bigger. Okay, and yeah, this one. I need to move these ones as well. To the size of the cube. One eighty. No, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Minus ninety. Is that the one? Yeah. Okay. It's not important anyway because in game it's gonna be. Oh, what is going on here? Why is this? Okay, there it is. Okay, let's try re-exporting and seeing how this new ball size works. Export. Select objects. So, okay, yeah, let's put the cube in here. Select objects, GLTF, tube. Boom, okay. We have a bigger sphere now. So we have to go into my... G uh, no, not GLB, but into the sphere. Uh, prefabs, module, 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 no, that's not hull sphere. There it is. Okay, so now I have to move these away, which is basically to the two mark. Oh, minus one. Wait. Oh, I did not apply the scale. <laughs> Forgot about that. Okay, let's re-export again. There it is. Yeah, this now makes sense. Okay, now we have a bigger sphere. This is gonna be minus one. This is gonna be minus one now this is gonna be one this is gonna be one 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 and this is gonna be minus one and finally we have one okay is that enough space well it kind of is but it's still very tight. Still very tight in here. So maybe I'm gonna have to make it even bigger. Uh, what the fuck has happened with the colliders? Ah, the, com the colliders have... <sighs> you see, this is the problem. This is the problem that Godot doesn't have component-based because now this collision shape is offset. But why doesn't the collision shape actually use the docking ring? This is weird. This is extremely weird. This doesn't make any sense. Because if I change the mesh of this, don't tell me that this is using it because I'm completely different. Mesh. No, it must be using the same one. And why is... Yeah, the collision mesh of the sphere didn't update either. Great! Is this another bug that I found? Is this another bug? Yeah, l look at that. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, maybe I have to re-import. 
let's try to re-import the GLB. Okay, no, that didn't do anything. The collision mesh is still wrong. Yep, okay, so I guess that's gonna be a normal thing now to like restart restart Godot. Whatever I need to do. Okay, so we can see here that the colliders did not update. Okay, this is terrible. Okay, this is terrible. So how do you update the... the why why the hell did not... The, the, the mesh colliders did not actually update? Is, aren't they supposed to use your parent mesh? How is this possible? It's really unsure what resource they're using. What is... How do you now redo the, uh, how can you say like, recompile the mesh collider? Is there a way to do this? Okay, I think it made the new one now. So you have to restart every time. Is that what's going on? Uh, looks like it. Okay, let's try to do the same with the sphere. Collision shape. I have to do a new one. New concave. Okay, let's check the docking. Okay, that seems to work. Does the sphere work? No! Oh god damn it! Okay, I am I am now <laughs> I'm now just annoyed that this doesn't work automatically. So what do you do now? How do you actually attach I'm completely confused about colliders. How do you attach a this mesh now to this collider? I don't I don't understand anything. You know why doesn't it automatically update? Uh, 
Okay. Good old, how to update Mesh Collider. When model changes. Well, it's an issue. How, how amazing. Uh, 3D imported. Describe the problem. Describe. This is likely a duplicate. How are you creating the collision shape? Most of the time, instead of creating... Uh, you should use the call prefix when importing a 3D scene. I, I do have a call prefix. Uh, but why doesn't it work automatically? If needed, you can import object meshes as scenes. When importing a 3D scene, if you intend to make a reusable 3D scene of any kind. Yeah, whatever. Instant mesh update. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. <sighs> so definitely reloading the tube does not work. Hull sphere, of course it has a static body and everything, but How do you even select a mesh? Okay, I'm completely confused here. Go to uh, select mesh for collider. How do you create a mesh collider? How to set a mesh as a collision shape? Yeah. Come on, open up. Does it not work? Generate physics and collider settings for a mesh. Yeah, this is this is broken.
currently undergoing maintenance. That's why it's low. Collision shape has a set shape. <laughs> Elf type kinematic rigid body or static body, depending on. Uh, add your mesh as a child of this node. Here in this mesh mode, it's like you will see a button appear on the top. Do I have to re add this one as a child? And why is this closed? I hear this issue in the best workaround for me is to create a new inherited scene after the asset is reimported and then immediately close it. As that seems to trigger updating all the existing what? <laughs> okay. If this is true, this is ridiculous. Okay, so I didn't I didn't save my changes, which is great because yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh so if I create what is it? What did it say? A workaround tube you open it and you say inherit you inherited scene that triggers okay yes the sphere is now reconstructed obviously okay so s let's see what happens uh i did uh, I deleted this one as well. Okay, let's let's uh, re. Let's okay. So that's how you fix it. Uh, docking ring, docking ring. Discard changes. Okay, I'm gonna discard the whole sphere as well. Okay, let's open the. Sphere. No, not cupola. The docking ring. Okay, yes, the mesh did not recalculate. Even if I did the, the hack. New inherited scene. Yeah, nothing happens.
Okay. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to do this. No, it still refuses to get updated. Why doesn't it just reference the mesh? I am completely confused. Let's try to export one more time. This is unity. How is it going? Well, for some reason the mesh colliders don't want to update. You see I changed the model. I increased the size of the sphere and now for some reason the mesh collider is still small you, as you can see. This is the mesh collider. It's still small. It's not as big as... And nothing works. It doesn't want to update. I tried deleting this. I tried changing the resource. Uh, I tried re-importing. And yeah, it is a known issue, obviously. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. I, and the worst thing is the collision shape 3D doesn't even have a reference to the mesh. This is what I'm confused about. Like how can I inspect the mesh that it is using? It's why doesn't it just reference the visual? If I remove this I make new concave. It still doesn't use it. It's still it's not. Yeah.
Okay, this doesn't work either. How do I even make a mesh collider? So if I open the main now, main, 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 main. Yep, it's broken. It's broken. Regrets. Yeah, this is definitely an issue. Instead of create three mesh collision sibling, you should use the cold prefix. That's what I'm doing. If you need it, you can import obj meshes. That's not a Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Collider bug established 2022. I don't understand this. Okay, let's let's give it something to work with. Yeah, reimported assets, nothing happened. The collisions are still wrong. Man, I was so excited about this because everything worked until now. And now everything decided to just not work. Okay, let's see, let's see the documentation. How does it work? Uh, just a collection. Um, um, 
can be used to form polyhedra. These bodies are small, we have a chance to clip through. It is hollow performance. It doesn't say anything about how to create it. How does it work? I think I'm, everybody's confused. You need to select Mesh Instance Node and then there should be an option called Mesh. You'll be presented with several options that create collision shapes. Where are those options that I that they talk about? There will be a new way to make convex polygon, okay. You select the mesh instance node and then there should be an option called mesh. What the fuck? There should be an uh, option mesh. I have no idea what they're talking about. What's the mesh option? Creates mesh collider from mesh. Oh, does it mean on the import? Maybe it's actually thinking of this one. Okay, let's go to this f knocking ring. No, I don't think this is what I mean. Oh, look at that. 
This is the uh oh, fucking shit. I didn't know that there's this thing. Who who can notice this? It should be like somewhere here. Create three mesh static body. Ugh. It creates a duplicate. Why does it create a duplicate? Why does it just update? Now I have to every time I have to like delete this. This doesn't work on scene root. Create single convex, simplified, multiple convex. Why does it say just update? Great, so every time I need to do this, I need to put it over here. Is that the way that you have to do it? My god. Okay. So I guess for the sphere, I also have to create trim mesh. And then delete this. There we go. Okay, now we have the colliders. Oh, I have to do this every time. So much manual work. I guess... Yeah, I really don't like this. I really don't like this way of... Having to update everything. And it doesn't work again. And it's broken. And it's broken again. And everything is fucked. Time to move to flex. <laughs> uh, which is also terrible. Maybe I should just go to Unity and not spend any time. Let's see if it works now. And yeah, magically it works now. Does, does sphere collisions work? They do. Okay. So now they suddenly do work. And yeah, this is now incorrect because the sphere is not two meters. Okay. Now I have to turn all the transforms again. Okay, save. Okay. Now what I can do is I can move this. Uh, why is this open? Oh, it's because there's only one of them. Okay, so I'm going to move this to be aligned. This should be a, what is it? Transform. Uh -huh. It still is not perfectly aligned, but... Okay, then this module should be over here. Slightly bigger. Minus 5.5 probably. Mm, okay, so this thing is on the zero. Yes, this thing. Why? Why doesn't transform open <laughs> automatically? This is annoying. Okay, this is all working right, and this now is on transform minus five point five, five point five. And there is a gap. Yeah, there is a gap because this thing. Yeah, I need to put the docking ring outside. Uh, 
Okay, what's the size of it? This is definitely zero. But this is seventy five. Uh, I need to put it outside a bit. All right. So yeah, there it is. Now they overlap. Yeah, okay. I have to change this. Which means... Got a collider, but... Yeah. It's so simple, lol. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's make sure that this is slightly inside. Okay, this should be 180. 180, and this should be 0. Alright, and this should now be on 175. Okay, like... Minus zero seventy five. Yeah, this should match exactly. But this should be slightly drawn in. So now again I need to change <laughs> the collider. Oh my god. Okay, let's make this slightly inside so there's more room for voxels to not leak. Okay. So this is going to be tube. But now I need to go into the tube. You see that the collider is wrong. What's the name of it? I can't even click on it. It's this thing. Uh, and now I have to rebuild the mesh collider. So annoying. Okay, so now this is exactly... This means that the whole ship is exactly on the 0 0.75 width. No, why is... Why does it have such a weird... Okay, so this is 0. Why... This should be zero, not zero, zero, twenty-five. Oh my god, this is all fucked. <laughs> this is one. This is 3.5. That's actually good. Uh, this one is... Minus two. And this one is minus three. There it is. And then this one is minus 375. There it is. And then this one is also 75 because this actually comes to the end. Is that correct? Nope. This should be 0, 75. There it is. Okay. So now it is on the exact line. Minus 5.5, .5, I guess. Again, it's not. <laughs> okay, the transform is correct. Okay, what the hell is going on now? Are there any gaps? This should be exactly two meters. 
the whole bounding box. So why is there a gap? Yeah, it is exact. Okay, what the fuck is going on? Why is it again 0, 0, 0,025? Did it accidentally move somehow? Yeah, so this is the same problem as in Blender. You can just move. What the fuck? Okay, I make it 0. I save it. Is it now on zero or is it not? I enter this again and now it's a zero. So how did I not previously? I don't know. There's so many ways that this can fail. And you know, in Unity, it shows like bold when you change something. You don't need that. I don't know how everything moved by this such a small margin. Okay, there it is. No, I don't want that. Okay, is that... Please tell me there's no gaps now. Okay, there are no gaps, finally. Okay, everything is on two. Yeah. Okay, so this should also be 5.5. Okay. And this should be 375. And this should be 375. And 5.5. .5. There we go. Okay, no gaps. Finally. Okay, and finally the cupola should also be at the 5.5. And... 175. The height. No gaps. Perfect. Okay, let's try it. Please tell me. Please tell me this works. Of course it doesn't. Yeah, great. Okay, I have to restart again, I guess. You know, that's just like normal. Uh, normal. Uh, so every time I update the mesh, I'm going to have to just restart Godot. Yeah, this is just... <sighs> I want Godot to be good, but... It's not reliable at all.
now it works I still can't pass through okay I forgot that I have a flashlight now Okay, at least I can go into one of the side hatches. So this is like the small the small one. They're actually pretty pretty big as well. Okay, I can go into the core module as well. Which is pretty handy. Okay, I want to make it. Uh, I want to make the camera a little bit more slidey, so that I don't bounce. Uh, how do I do that? I make a physics material, right? physics body collision is that part of collision object wait where is my collider ah collision shape it's this one it's really annoying that it's Completely unrelated. Sphere shape. Uh, okay, custom solver. What is this margin resource? Uh, I want a different physical object, physical response. Physical material override. There it is. New physics material. Frictions one. Uh -huh. The body is friction, frictionless. Let's make it zero. Rough. What does rough mean? If true, the physics engine will use the friction of the object marked as rough when two objects collide. The physics engine will use the lowest friction of all collide. Aha, I see. Yeah, that's the way how it combines. Absorbent, if true, subtracts the bounces from the colliding object. Let's make it half bouncy or something. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, such a strong bounce. Yeah, at least I'm not moving. Yeah, so yeah, I shouldn't actually bounce. It should be zero, but I should. Yeah, the friction should be zero or or less, so that when you collide into something, 
Yeah, you don't stop immediately. But also, it shouldn't be zero. So it may be zero of three. Okay. Still get stuck. I want to actually make it unstuckable. Custom integrator. Can sleep. No. Can never sleep. Lock rotation, yeah, I think. This is probably the reason why I get wedged. Yeah, you see, I never stop now moving, which is good. Which is good because eventually you do want to reach the edge of something. Okay, what do I want? I want to have a collider. Uh, no, I want to actually improve the movement of the camera. So, oh yeah, solar panels, <laughs> resize the sphere node, I did it. But it's not enough. Solar panels I'm gonna do next time. Now I want to try to add raycast locomotion. So what I want to do is I want to try to make movement using the mouse. So you're actually instead of so this is let me show you. Let me show you what I'm trying to do. So instead of having this magical jetpacks for moving around, I want you to actually grab a something like the surface here and then like move your mouse and you know basically like send your cell side sideways like this like you're basically like grabbing stuff and moving so instead of instead of just magically moving you have to use something to move against uh, so yeah I'm going to need raycasts how do raycasts work I need to remember
You know what? Let's make a new script. Let's make player movement. Uh, this seems hard to do. I actually did this before, so I know it's it's I know it's doable. <laughs> I know that it's doable. Okay. Uh, player movement. Okay, so I'm gonna replace camera 3D with player movement. Okay, and that shouldn't change anything because it's identical. But I just wanna keep the old one. Ah, that changed. Ah, it's just the force changed. Okay, that's good, that's good. Uh, I'm gonna rename this to like <laughs> I don't know I'm gonna call it swim swim for smolt because like imagine like you're swimming in air right <laughs> that's only going to help you when like where is it? There it is. Uh, basically, like if you get stuck or something in a in an area that you cannot reach any surfaces around you, so that's like just going to help you to be able to move slightly. Fail to build project. Oh yeah, of course, because now I have swim for smolt. Okay. Uh, and here's the thing. We all we already have mouse delta. I can remove that. So yeah, what do I actually want? What I want is I want to create a joint. This is going to take forever to implement, I think, because in Unity at least you you see the joints. <laughs> Here this is gonna be rough. Okay, how do joints work in this engine? I need to figure out. Joint. Pin joint. Attaches to 3D... No, I need... Uh, I need a fixed joint, but this doesn't have fixed joint. Okay, let's try something. Uh, so I'm gonna do a okay let's make a pin joint and I'm gonna com connect player with rigid body this one wait let's let's do a box uh, let's call this test box and then for the spin joint test box okay and what's the radius parameters bias damping maybe it's defined in the beginning let's see what happens oh yeah now my force my swim force is too low let's just make it much stronger um, I 
I did not press enter. <laughs> Terrible. Okay, so there it is. It does work. Oh, wait. It doesn't... What? Okay, so I guess... Uh, wait, let me debug. Debug collision shapes. Is there a way to debug joints? No. Yeah, I don't see any joints here. Okay, so I think the problem is probably because the pin joint is somewhere far away. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's see. Go to pin joint. The physics joint attaches to, to the physics bodies. Okay, there's no explanation. Softness. Okay, yeah, that is actually the, the point of contact. Yeah, so I'm moving this cube and the cube is moving me we're all we're all dancing around each other that's nice <laughs> okay but I actually want I don't want a pin joint hinge joint generic x6 duff cone twist Maybe I want a ball and socket. Okay, let's remove the player. And test box. Okay. So what does it say? Oh, it has a it has a nice GUI. Okay, it does focus towards the point. That's good. Swing span. Okay, so I can I can reduce the swing span. Bias. Relaxation. I don't know what these properties are. Oh, I just exploded into infinity. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> Great. Yeah, you have two up bodies and it already explodes. Great. What physics engine is Godo using? Godo physics engine. Does it have its own? Default is the bullet physics engine.
I, I have no idea. Apparently you can add your own physics engine. Yeah, I've seen that there is actually a God of Jolt uh, extension. That would be cool to add. I've used this a little bit in C++. There are optional substitute nodes available for all the joints. What about determinism? Is not able to make such guarantees. What's not supported? Softbound body, okay. World boundary. Not thread safe, double precision. Okay. <laughs> Goto X Acid Library. I didn't even know that that this thing exists. Restart Goto object your project settings. Okay. Should I mess around with this? Yeah, let's try Jolt. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, I actually changed a lot. Okay, let me remove this cone twist joint. updated resized sphere updated ports uh, new controller before physics change but it looks like bullet is the default whatever that is i mean bullet bullet engine that that that's the one i use in uh, that's the one i use in in shakedown rally my rally game but i don't know why this joint physics is like okay Let's see, did it download? <laughs> Where are even downloads here? Uh, what the hell? Okay, there it is. Asset library. How does this work? Okay, how do I install? Open your project settings. Okay, I'm gonna shut down Godot. Extract it in your project folder. You need to go through the following apps to switch physics engine. So you just extract it. Okay, where is my I guess I just put this into here and that's it. Hmm, yeah, 
as with it as DLLs. It doesn't work with uh, C sharp. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's start it. Some extensions need data to restart. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I guess editor settings. No, where was that? Uh, open your project settings. Project settings are here. Project settings. Uh, make sure advanced settings is enabled. Okay, I didn't know that even exists. Go to physics and then 3D. Hmm. Physics 3D, Physics Engine, Jolt, Bang, okay, restart, save and restart, let's see if everything breaks now, have you never seen the Acid Lib page on Goto? Uh, no, which one? <laughs> you mean when you start Goto? I don't know, I didn't, ah, this one. I didn't, uh, I guess I didn't. Yeah. I did read the tab title, but I didn't click on it. Um, okay, let's see if I need to change anything or not. Is this just magically working with Jolt now? All right. I don't know. I guess this is Jolt now. Oh, look. This these orange arrows are casting like uh <laughs> procedural, you know, um how do you call it? the global illumination and everything it's funny anyway is this now jolt okay let's see uh hull sphere let's see this thing player okay let's add the child node does it have jolt Jolt editor plugin. Jolt. Count with joint. Oh no, this is joint, not jolt. Jolt joint. Aha. Uh -huh. Jolt count with joint. Enjoy its slider joint. Okay, let's try Jolt's version. I'm gonna use the player and then use the test box. Twist limit, swing limit. Twist motor. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it even works. Okay. And look at that, it doesn't explode. Well, there are some weirdnesses. But at least it's better than bullets. I mean, I'm not asking it to like 
work perfectly with such a long arm okay so anyway I guess we have A joint. <laughs> okay, what if I put it to zero? Twist limit, and I have a twist. I have, oh no, no motors. Okay, so now it's basically acting as a fixed joint. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, you see there's uh, some jumps. But okay, that's an edge case. At least it doesn't explode. This is how we can carry items. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's see. Um, cone twist joint. What else is there? Slider joint, hinge joint, and SD uh, DOF joint. I guess I actually need a DOF joint because that's the generic one. Uh, and I need to have all the limits enabled okay so this is basically like uh, a fixed joint now right no okay wait uh, linear limit is on linear spring Okay, maybe it needs to be something minimal. That's why it doesn't work. I don't know. Let's see. Nope, still. Oh, I didn't connect it. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, player and test box. Okay, yeah, there it is. I'm keeping it in the box. Okay, let's see if putting it to zero, basically that creates a fixed joint now. Yeah, this is a fixed joint now. It doesn't have any rotation, right? Impressive, impressive. Okay, so now what I actually need to do is I need to generate <laughs> on the fly, I need to raycast into a surface and create a uh, create a fixed joint. So uh, okay, let me add this. F so I'm going to say, l let me actually um, ignore, ignore Jolt. Oh, yeah, open in Visual Studio in uh, VS Code. Uh, wait, let's see. Where is it? Get ignore. There it is. 
Okay, I'm gonna just ignore everything in Jolt. No, I didn't mean that. I meant in plugins, add-ons. Good old Jolt. Good old Jolt. There it is. Okay. Added jolt. Nice. Okay, so what are we gonna do here with jolt? I'm going to Yeah, I want to actually create on click. Okay, so I I need to grab a click now. Uh, else if event is input mouse input event mouse button. Okay. E dot button uh, what's the name of it press pressed uh -huh. if pressed and button index is zero right that should be LMB Why does it complain? The local parameter cannot be declared in this code because it's already used. So, oh, this is actually propagating through. Okay. Mouse event. Meh. Okay. So yeah, let's let's do a print clicked. not outputting anything right so this is maybe that's not zero button <laughs> oh it's camera controller yes again wrong script uh, instead I'm gonna put it in here No, nothing. Cool. Okay. The mouse button that different. One of the mouse buttons are button wheel constants. Oh, it's this. What number is this? Oh, it's actually one. Okay. There it is, clicked. Okay, it works. Uh, but here I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a physics process. For physics process, I'm gonna raycast. How do I do that? Physics raycast square. 
query project array normal array cache represents array array cache can ignore array cache calculates to sweep a region of three space you can approximate array cache 3d array cache Okay, I'm gonna have to Google. Got a raycast. Raycasting. Uh, get world 3D. Get world 3D. What the fuck? Raycast rig query parameters 3D. Oh my god. Oh, this is the thing that everybody is complaining about. <laughs> that is creating, allocating. Dot create. Okay, and now there is multiple ways to do this. No. Aha, uh -huh, from two collision mask. Exclude. Okay. So from two is going to be from position. Two position plus forward. This forward. And that returns a query, right? Oh my god, array. <laughs> Use it to quickly create. Okay, you only create a query. And then you actually get a result. Is there a faster way to jolt? I wonder. Maybe there is a way to grab it directly. Good old jolt. Raycast using hit back faces. Okay, I guess I guess you just interact with it in the normal way. Okay, um, let's see. Raycasts again. Collision exceptions. Okay, result. Space. Oh, you get this space.
intersect ray query and then you get the result The resulting object is a dictionary with the following fields. My God. <laughs> Wait, what do I actually pass it as a key? is a dictionary with the following fields dictionary Oh, it's not even a generic dictionary. It's an old type of dictionary. <laughs> Great. Uh, so can I for each through the dictionary? value what is a key yeah I have no idea what this is okay let's see how do I actually get stuff from the result this is incredibly weird okay how do I go through results okay I need to find Hugo Do do I have it somewhere on github how am I actually doing raycasts in it I can't remember that I did this Query if collision if collision. I don't think it's going to work. What the hell is the value? Variant, variant. What the fuck? C sharp. Go for.
What is this result? Can I just... Print... Uh, type... Of this... Oh, I want to use type of... From zig... Type of... Res is a variable, but this is used like a type. Okay, let's just print this. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's make the end by 1000. So I'm sure I'm hitting something. Intersects array in a given space. The position the normal position. Okay. The return object is a dictionary with the following fields. Collider. Wait, do I just query with a string? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, this is going to run every every frame. Okay, so what is this? Outputting a lot of things. Why isn't there any example? Recast. Okay. Change variable. Okay. Okay. There it is. Result collider detection if result has collider. So it's literally like, oh my god, you query it by string. Uh -huh, yeah.
result collider okay so first I need to check if there is any and then I'm gonna get results yeah I'm just gonna get it like this collider well this is not safe uh, as collision okay I'm just gonna get it like this and this is gonna be an object right variant collider variant whatever variant is it's probably some kind of a good old object okay uh, Okay, there it is. So, static body, but it's not static. Strange. Ah, it's not static, it's just called static body. <laughs> okay, yeah, because of test box. No, I still don't understand. Ah. Be maybe because it's... Collision shape. Wow, it has so many conversion <laughs> as nodes. Okay, can you just cast it as collision shape? Can I convert type variant to collision shape so how do you do it as node path Nothing. Nothing. Can I just get a name of a thing? <laughs> what? 
what the fuck gets the node name indicated by IDX doesn't make any sense as node path yeah I don't think that's actually a node path yeah Okay, let's see. I have to I have to watch this because there's no written tutorial. Is colliding. Oh no, this is not this is not raycast. Raycasting in Gundo. Why why is everything so complicated? This should be an easy to use engine. Okay, I don't fucking care about that. Raycast node. Wait, there is a raycast node. It's an object. Oh, are you kidding me? And how does it work? Okay, and what does it do? Fail to build. Okay, so I'm just detecting collisions and then what happens
So how do you use the Raycast node? Do you have to inherit it? Uh, go to... How does it work? Wait. What the fuck is this format thing? <laughs> uh is this in a... Re I'm completely confused. I don't know if this is... Result. This is like a... It's almost like a challenge. How to make... Rake us more complicated and like yeah but I am completely confused about this how do I cast into anything? Result is collider, but what the hell is this result collider player? Get collider. What does it return? It returns a Godo object.
Okay, I think the problem is that it's hitting itself. So I need to make sure it doesn't hit itself. Hit from inside. If true, the wave will detect a hit when starting inside shapes. Let's try that. That didn't change anything. Collision mask. Okay. I need to make sure that player sphere Okay, that, yeah, that actually works. But I need to disable. Okay, can I make it ignore a single request node? Setting no transfer notification. But I don't collide with anything now. Oh, yeah, I do. That's good. Okay, so there it is. It does actually give me... Something to work with. So how does actually how does it actually work now? I have to figure out. Request node. Damn it! I don't know. Okay, so maybe I need to do like if object, but this is a collider. If object is 
rigid body 3D. Else, if object is static body. Tag. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it does. Okay, so that's how you do it. Okay. So this is has collided basically. And now what I want to do Okay, I'm going to add a bool once to grab. I'm going to add this here once to grab. And then if once to grab kill it false so yeah create a joint okay so create node. no node. okay how do you create a node uh, node get node. okay go to create node. from code you just create a new one uh, what is it what do I want to make I want to make a jolt six duff oh you know what maybe i can grab this one chill generic six duff joint uh go to plugins go to plugins game no Okay, let me restart. Is there anything else? Maybe, maybe it exists now.
I don't know. examples damn it There's no C sharp or what is this PowerShell. Okay. How do I even use that from C sharp? I, I've completely, I have completely no idea. There must be some kind of an interface, right? So it does have C sharp. C sharp, okay. It there's just no there's no would trigger physics direct space. Okay. There just is no how how do you even how does it even work? Docs hacking. There must be some C sharp script somewhere. <laughs> How is this possible? There's the there's none. The CS language C sharp. There's nothing. Okay, so how do I even use <laughs> if function is a drop in the replacement by implementing the same nodes that you would nor normally. But how do I, what if I have special nodes? Doesn't make any sense. Okay, I didn't expect that Godot would be so hard to be honest.
So I just do a uh, six duff. Do I just create it like this? What is set? So how do you set the parent? I'm just completely confused about everything in Godot. Godot creates nodes programmatically. <laughs> Create a new node. Var new node is special new. Get the current scene roots to add it there. Get tree. Add the child. Add child. Okay. So you add child this add child like this the problem is what is this fucking type Jolt generic dove joints. Okay, I'm gonna search through the whole repository now because that's the only thing that keeps making sense. So that they can search in it. Okay, and now I'm gonna search for Jolt. In the whole project. Six of joint, there it is. Bind method. All right. This is CPP. So they don't have any CS code, they actually generate CS, I think. <laughs> okay, let's look for namespace then.
I'm just gonna go through all the letters now. <laughs> Microsoft. So, the only thing is go to plugins. Does that include Jolt? Nope. Okay, let's do it in here. Game in main. Mm, no, that doesn't. How do you search the whole namespace? Yeah, I, I'm I'm completely confused about everything here. Let's see any issues. Okay, let's try this. My character GD. Hmm, it doesn't work. Okay. Here, here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna create. I'm just gonna grab. Yeah. <laughs> this is the problem. I don't know how to even grab this one. Because I can't. Jolt joint 3D. It would be great to be able to get somehow the namespace of this thing. Uh, is it is there any kind of possibility to search namespaces namespace search is it to find you can browse the standard library no I don't understand. Okay, what's the difference between Jolt and this one? Linear limits, it's the same. Except it doesn't use softness, I guess. Okay, it does actually behave the same. So I'm just gonna use that one. Uh, okay, export. It's 
generic six dot joint. Okay. So I'm not gonna add child. Grab joint. What's the name of it? Um, joint three D player node A. Uh huh. Node A is this? No, it's actually it's actually the rigid body. Is R B. And the grab joint node B is like this. But what does it say? The node attached to the first cannot basically convert type to node path. Get path. Okay, wait. Let's make it uncollidable. At the beginning. So nothing, nothing. Uh -huh. The problem is I didn't assign it. There it is. Cool, it actually works, finally. The problem is it should also rotate. So let's see. Okay, I am actually going to use the node A. <laughs> mm. 
No, let's keep the bull because I'm not sure if this actually casts to nothing. Okay, and now when I actually release. Okay, let's go with uh, web states. Wants to grab, grabbed. Okay, how does it work with the uh, mouse button? Why does everything have a quirk? Is action just released? What? Is action released? No. Cancelled. What's cancelled? Has been cancelled. Meta pressed. Alt pressed. <laughs> shift pressed. Why does these things even exist? Why not just say shift plus? It's ridiculous.
But why does it need a string? What the fuck? What is it? What, what is this? No, this is something wrong. Is action released? Action name? Returns true if the given action is released. Why why does pressed exist and release doesn't exist? I don't understand. The balance positive inventing has been cancelled. Does cancelled mean release or not? This is ridiculous. Okay. Uh, I think. Uh, hi, thanks for being my virtual co worker. I'm easily distracted to work alone. Oh. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Why is releasing a button so hard? Is that cancel? Okay, let's try canceled. I don't think that's canceled, but that would be ridiculous if that was the case. No, it's not cancelled. It's something else. about else nothing so maybe nothing is released I 
Okay, seems like nothing is released. There we go. Okay, well, I guess that was uh, that was the simple. <laughs> I didn't even think about it because I, I would think that there's more states. Uh, try non caps. Yeah. Uh, no, this was probably it. It's so stupid. <laughs> I spent like one hour on this just to see that this is non pressed. Is release. Okay. Well, that's great. Uh, okay. If. I want to release. Okay, I want to rename this. Uh -huh, it's F2. Uh, grab input. Let's call it grab input. And then grab state is grabbed. And this should be grabbed is false. And this wants to grab and grabbed is false. Okay, so this creates a, and then I can release it. There it is. Okay, so we have some grabbing there. We can grab and we can release a thing. This is a super annoying, <laughs> like, okay, wait. If I rotate this a bit, why does this box not rotate at all? Okay, it does rotate now. Okay, so let's try to move the anchor. So if grabbed, Let's actually add, let's actually fork this. Uh, how could I move the joints? Grab joints, anchor. There is no anchor. Okay, I need to go to the joints. And then see what it's, what it is it have. Black. Parameter. Oh my god, it has in a param Why the hell is it long? <laughs> it's not going to have like more than 2 billion parameters. Doesn't make any sense.
What the hell? Okay, join 3D. I can't get to there. Good joint 3D source. That's it. It only has node A, node B, and that's it. And solver priority. There are no anchors. There are no, like, how does that even work? So the only way to do something is to move the... But joints have two sides. That's the problem. They don't only have one thing. Linear limit. In Unity, there is the anchor that you can move around. Here, there is no such thing. Does Jolt have an anchor? Well, you can actually modify the limits. So instead of this, what happens if I move the joint? What if I make it part of camera? Yeah, it's not moving. I think it's relative to the to the rigid body. So I could only move the rigid body. So can I actually attach it to a different thing?
Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna create a new node. Anchor node. That position doesn't work. Why would it? <laughs> so is this position target position? The raised destination point. Local position there is this node. Point. Get collision point. This place is this in the global coordinate system. Okay. So, okay, it's going to be like this. And then, anchor nodes. I'm gonna grab the anchor node and set the parent. Set parent. No, you say. Um, to the other rigid body, add node, right? Add child. Add child. Anchor nodes. Uh, what's going on here? As you can issue list can be simplified. Ah, okay. You can set the position directly. Parent add child. Okay, so you add this as a child. And then I'm going to use that anchor node as a thing. And then I need to save the anchor node. I'm going to remove, I'm going to just kill the anchor nodes. Destroy. Remove. The node is not deleted, it must be deleted manually. Delete. No. Destroy. Delete. Okay, uh, so I'm just gonna have grab joint node B, get nodes, nodes. Okay, I need to save this. No, what's the name of it? Uh, anchor node.
I'm gonna make it like this. Q3. Okay. So let's see if this makes any sense. No. <laughs> okay, something has happened. I think I removed an object. I'm definitely removing something. Oh, other free. I'm not. I don't need to. I need to remove the anchor nodes. That's the other. But the point is that it doesn't work because the anchor it's not being attached to the anchor at all. So it needs to be attached. The problem is I can't even test because I don't see what's going on in the editor. Dynamically instance in joints. Handling joints in Godot is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> and one attaches the body one at the global position of the joint. So set global position first and then attach it. Weird stuff happens when you move the joints. And to attachment point on body two, you have to take into account the relation rotation of the joint and the initial offset. Simply point the joint towards the position on body two. I'm sure it's step three. I think it should work in the same way. And yeah, it's just so annoying that everything works through paths. Because I can't just grab uh, the path of this. Can't just grab a node. I have no idea even if this can be grabbed in the same way. That I'm trying to do.
I, I have no idea if I'm actually even instantiating <laughs> objects correctly. So this guy is instantiated on this. Does it actually work by... Okay, so... Uh, instance. No, it's not. node path how do you even cast a into the node there's no get i i just don't fucking understand anything Yes, this is the old one. But how do you get it now? Is there is there a way to get a node? Node B dot absolute dispose equals get as property path. Nothing makes sense. Get sub name, get type is empty. Yeah, but like, is this a proper way to create nodes? Can you actually do the new node? I have no idea. You know, this is where editor really would come in handy. Like, in Unity, when you create something, it's in editor, like, and you can see it. But here, I have no idea if this has been added or not. And then if this is going to even work. create node from code So yeah, this is in JDScript, script, but in, okay, it is. Oh, I didn't see the C sharp thing. Okay, new sprite today. Okay, and then you have to add child. Yeah, so I think this is correct. Then why doesn't it work? And it doesn't give me any debug. What is node B? I mean, so basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put an anchor at the custom position. Uh, node B like should be the rigid body, right? It does work if it does work if I put a rigid body. If I just put the other RB, right? That works fine. But I need to modify the anchor. There, this works. But the thing is that it's automatically bound to the center. So this is what is happening. This is what is happening. 
where is elec oh yeah this one basically you have your th my camera I have an object when you create a joint it gets created between the camera and the center but what I want to do is I want to create from a camera to the point where I raycast and so I thought what if I add a sub object that is actually here relative to the object right that's why I'm creating this anchor but it looks like it doesn't work with it looks like it doesn't work if you give it a node and not a rigid body but it doesn't give me any errors that's the thing it's like why not say like rigid body is wrong like it's not the rigid body instead there's nothing nothing is happening well this in this case it's working uh, but in this case it's just like yeah nothing is happening i mean okay yeah because in in unity there is actually like joints have anchors when you take a joint it has like you know it has a anchor property that you can set to a different thing and it also has a connected anchor which sets a different like basically you can have two different offsets if you have your object A is here and your object B is here you can set two offsets from this point and from this point so that they c you can make a joint between these two points and this is the anchor and this is the connected anchor and Godot only, an only anchors to the exact to the center of something I guess and then it uses this custom position, which well, the only thing that I can do is I can actually reverse. So yeah, but that's not going to work either. I thought about I could reverse the points uh, so I, I put this movable thing to the object but that's not the issue the issue is that I want to later move this up this point as you're looking around Man, this is so easy to do in, in Unity. And this is... How come it doesn't have anchors? This is what I'm confused about. And now I'm just like Googling for no... You know, like nothing comes out. How to keep a rigid body still while attaching a joint? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, this is... I have to end here because it's already... It's, it's almost six. I've been doing this fucking stupid problem in like two hours.
and I'm getting really frustrated with this. I think tomorrow I'm just gonna go to Unity because The problem is I can't even debug because this raycast thing is in the way all the time. Why? And it doesn't actually debug joints. That's the problem. There's no joint debugging. It only de uh, debugs collision shapes and collisions. I'm also a fellow Unity refugee. How long have you been using Godot? Gotta write your own debugs. Yeah, I don't know even how to how to do a debug because I can't grab a, a how do you convert this node path thing to a, a the node itself so that I can grab so that I can get it. There's no get nodes. No. Grab joint node B. Okay, is it get node? Oh, it's get node from path. So great. It's not inside this. It's it's. <sighs> yeah, but what is it? I don't know. I I I mean, even if I grab a node which I've assigned it myself. The problem is that that doesn't that doesn't prove that if joint works or not. Linear lower limits. Yeah, you can't. You can't set the anchor. What is max? No, oh, it's just the size of the enum. Can't you print node? I mean, I can print the node. But what do I get with that? Okay, let's me remove this static and rigid body.
node 3d5 yeah it's creating new nodes yeah it's definitely part of the rigid body so that's good I did create it correctly but for some reason you know it doesn't want to attach to the parent rigid body I guess so I guess that's not just not how it works I'm expecting that Does it actually create objects here? There it is. It has appeared on the left. Left side of the... Sp uh, it's there, but it, nothing happens. Okay, let's reverse these. Let's not do that. Can I send a link, I guess, if it's going to help me? Okay, let's go with grab, let's reverse. So this is going to be gra uh, node A, this is going to be node B, and it's going to be other rigid body, get path, and it should be the same, oh yeah, well it's still not going to work. <laughs> uh, Okay, I want to create an anchor node. But that anchor node is going to be... Oh! Actually, no. There's not going to be any anchor nodes. Instead, this is going to be... Ah, yes, I actually need to move the joint position. Is other rigid body? No, it's actually the target. The pos um, rake has node gets collision point. So I'm going to create at this point the joint not create but move it and then I'm gonna add other RB add child I'm gonna move this joint uh, into it instead and then I'm gonna create 
node A is other rigid body and node B is mine. And then I'm going to remove child joint, grab joint, and we're not going to free anything. Let's try this. There's a demo project for joints in Gota 3, but it might explain things. Okay, so it behaves slightly differently. There is some wobbliness. Okay, let me try to actually move the anchor. joint uh, let's let's see this uh, grab joint position is forward no this forward this position plus this forward by two and see what happens now <laughs> nothing happens Oh, there's something in the debugger. Pointer call something something. Can add child, already has a parent. Uh, already has a parent so you'd need to relieve the parenting I guess okay there it is but it's not moving. I don't know why.
Uh, it's the same thing. No, this I made this extension. Transform forward, transform uh, basis Z. It's just an extension I made. So the it's more logical. Uh, Yeah, I don't get it. So it's it's working, but changing the position, I guess, does nothing. Let's remove the angular limits. And what happens then? Nothing happens. This doesn't make any sense. Like, I was expecting. This is just going to rotate the object, but this doesn't do that. Print the position, I mean. It is, I mean, it is changing. It's not actually, wait. This is global position, right? Local position or translation of this node. Ah, wait, position is actually, wait, position is actually local? Since when? <laughs> Okay, what if this was the problem all along? Okay, global position. That's the one. Okay, maybe I made a mistake. Yeah, this is because Unity has taught me that position is global position and local position is the local position. Okay, still doesn't really work, but let's see, maybe it's the angular limits. Let's 
No, it definitely doesn't change. Okay, this should also be global position. Maybe the anchor thing worked, but uh, it was the wrong position. Now I'm and now I'm not sure. Okay, this is definitely more static. Okay, uh, what is, okay, let me look at your example, and then I'm gonna go to sleep. Switch joints can be a bit over melting, this may be helpful. Okay, I can't even open this. Okay, let me do it on the on the PC. On this step, on this setup, there's a slider joint to the left. It's really 90 degrees. You can kick up the rigid body by pressing enter. But in contrast to what is said in the docs, the slider joint is not suitable. So a uh, generic six duff. The position of joints is marked with a purple box. The positions where an impulse can be applied is marked with a red dot, red marker. Hinge joints with different angle restrictions Pin joint on this left, you can see with the pin joint connection. On the right, the same setup using cone twist. I don't understand any, any of this. What is physics server? Does that exist? Maybe this is old things. I'm 
joint create why is there yeah this pin joint get local a returns position of the joint in local space of body a of the joint this is what i need no maybe not what is pin joint again it's the one that rotates around right Yeah, because it has only one parameter. Now <laughs> let's sleep. Did you print the global one? That's true. I did not print the global one. <laughs> this is annoying. Okay, so I'm not moving. Let's see. Yeah, I'm definitely moving the camp the point with just looking around. But it does not affect anything about the joint. That's the problem. Okay. Got out, got to grab items. Example with physics. Is there any example of grabbing items? Pick up and grab like Mario shells. Man. How to implement the fixed joints, yeah. This is what I'm interested in as well. Okay, what if I remove angular limit now? It should rotate. Hopefully. But still be pinned.
There it is. Okay, there is far more springiness now. But but yeah, still moving around doesn't work. Move around objects with joints. <laughs> Is there uh, just position an object to pin joint dynamically by code? Fix point rotates about its endpoints. Is it possible that there's some kind of a private thing that I can't access unless I is everything in Godot public or is this or is there public stuff? Like if I make a new script that inherits from uh from joint joint like joint Oh, Jolt. No, I actually want generic. Okay. Is there something that can be overridden? That I can't dispose? No, raise class set. Property can revert. No, but anchor position No, I don't think there's anything hidden It's only parameters which are weird And then you have, what is the signal name? Okay, what about joint? Joint 3D. Solar priority is nothing. There's nothing useful. Okay, the only strange thing is this exclude from collision. Okay, 
unfortunately I'm going to abandon here and maybe tomorrow I'll abandon Godot <laughs> completely because this is just draining too much of my power to figure out holding a rigid body object aha uh aha -huh. uh -huh. look at this this is something that I need yeah this is basically what I need but uh, I think that this is actually working in the problem is that the problem that in this case the object the item doesn't affect you in my case I want to bind the two together uh, you know the object the thing and the player because the player is a rigid body as well yeah well in this case it's actually easy it's just moving the anchor around and then this is attached to that that's the easy part that's the easy way yeah actually this yeah this is this this is super easy yeah I could do that but that's not the point <laughs> Uh, so then I need to like what put two joints one on one side and one on the other Okay, I have an idea how to do static collisions. Uh, let me, oh my God, it's morning. Uh, okay. Um, let's try to do static collisions quickly. Basically, I have a node. I'm going to unparent the joint. Okay. And the global position of it uh, instead of doing the parenting thing, wouldn't it be better to set the X, Y, Z limits? But the problem is that the limits are not positioned in space. That's the problem. It's just uh, it's just like like oh no this is motor it's like upper distance and lower distance it's the distances that it does it's not it's not the x position right and the y position and the z position it's it's actually the distance <sighs> but here's the problem I could use a jolt dove joint okay I could use a jolt dove joint because jolt jolt one does have position wait where is it doesn't it have no it doesn't yeah it does kind of have position because you can modify the lower and the upper uh wait upper distance lower distance yeah this is the distance is that the distance or okay i'm just confused now
Okay, maybe this is actually global space. Okay, maybe it's the same. Just doesn't show me. Just it doesn't show me my uh, nice. Uh. Okay, well, let me try to make it for. Uh, let me try to make it for. Static stuff. Okay, again. I'm going to set the global position. No, you know what? I'm going to make position to be zero. It does have zero. Okay. And then I remove child. And then I'm going to attach only the player. get path right and then okay let's not do this oh yeah no actually yes I do want to do this but I don't want to make it forward. I want to make it. Wait, how do I calculate the position now? Aha, I need the collision points. And I'm going to make it okay. Static collision point is uh, where is my raycast? Get collider. No, I'm going to make a position like this. call it point because that's how unity calls it <laughs> is point and it's in world space so now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take instead of this this is gonna be minus I'm gonna take the point and put it okay Let's see if this works. At least the simple variant with static geometry. Fail to build project. I really hate <laughs> the way that it says fail to build project and that's it. Why don't you give me... Uh, hmm? Transient child. Build failed. The type of namespace joint does not exist. What? The namespace join jolt generic. Okay. Ah. Grab joint. It's this thing. Let's remove it. Okay. Okay, not even this works. 
God damn it. Uh, oh, I think because I didn't grab it. Else if. Yeah, I need to do this, these things now. Grabbed is true. Oh, I didn't even set. Oh, it is correct. Returns the absolute path. Okay. Errors, nice. Set global position. What the fuck? Player movement. Physics. No 3D. Set global position. Set global position. This is a tree. It's true. Let's get this outside. <sighs> and then I don't need to remove it. Okay, it definitely <laughs> has jointed. Okay, I think that this just doesn't work. Like it, you can't change the position of a joint afterwards. I think that's the thing. What if I make it a B? No, it just doesn't. Yeah, ah, I'm. It, tomorrow I'm I'm moving to Unity. Like I, I, yeah, I, I mean the global illumination is cool, but I can't spend days just working on, you know, just trying to figure out things that I can't even test.
Yeah, that's it. I'm I'm going to sleep. Goodbye.